Danny, when I tell you, <laughs> first try, <laughs> no warm up, tomorrow, you fly me to the campus of Wipeout. The easiest W in the history of Ws. You're so wrong. You're so wrong, but you were so the type to think you can clear Wipeout. I am walking through that Wipeout course like <laughs> Japan in the Japo-Russo War of 1902. Like, I am, it, it's not even close. I can't disagree because I have no idea what war you're referencing. Uh, the war that led to the industrialization of Japan and why they became a military power in the early 1900s, obviously. <laughs> you... Everybody assumed because Russia was a much larger territorial-wise country yeah. that they would easily beat Japan, but they couldn't figure that, they couldn't finish their Trans-Siberian Railway. Uh -huh. So they couldn't get troops to their own Eastern Front, which is a problem. So Japan made a bunch of memes about it. They're like, haha, you have no railway, which actually they is what- They made memes. Yeah, they did. There was, I mean, yeah. like, propaganda was the original yeah. memes. And then they Just were like- Just big, like, posters everywhere, like, with the black bar and, yeah. like, the text on top and bottom. Absolutely. Like, like fucking- Poor it's like Brian. when you Russian. Yeah, when like, you, and it's just like a guy with like a, like a railway spike through his yeah. forehead or something. They're like, they don't know where to put him. Oh my God. Uh, but yeah, so that's why the Trans-Siberian Trans -Siberian Railway, one of the greatest engineering feats of human history was completed. You, your capacity to just pull out a cold open like it's nothing, mm -hmm. like it's like it's a knife cutting through warm butter. Absolutely. Is the most impressive. Or, you know, pod knife not cutting through my forearm hairs, apparently. I hate pod knife. I love pod knife. I know you I feel do. like pod knife gives us the edge that we're looking for like i don't i don't like that you're gonna, you're gonna, we're gonna talk about anime you're gonna get stabbed <laughs> i'll like pod knife if that becomes a segment yeah where it's like like a guess or get stabbed that's pretty good i like that i don't like that you get pod knife and i still don't have my bell my old sailor's bell i i just don't know where we would install it Daniel. just install i just want it coming down from nothing yeah like no one gets to see where it comes if down you put it from. right there we could we could definitely have pod bell. i just want a big wooden post covered in barnacles like dang you realize it we down. could literally just put it on the soundboard right <sighs> That's just not enough for you. You want like a you That's want like right. a land ho. Like you want to yeah, you want you want a ring a ding ding. Oh yeah, I want a ring a ding ding. So why do you think I wouldn't be able to beat Wipeout? Well, here's the thing. First off, yeah, your capacity for cold opens astounds me because seconds, as anyone on the live stream knows, mm. seconds before we hit record, I was just like, do you think you could beat Wipeout? And you're like, hold on, that's the cold open. Absolutely. Record. So let me tell you about the Japanese Russo War of 1902. It's an important historical event. But just with no prior expectation of talking about that, you're ready with the whole history I lesson. think it's mostly because, and apparently, I'm starting to catch yapper allegations. Good. Uh, yeah, so I... It's contagious. It's not great. <laughs> uh, and apparently, it's they're set in love. It said... So recently, I made a video about a JGK theory where I was like, oh... You know, like, is Rico Amini Dagon? It was like, that was like the entire video. It was like, is Rico Amini reincarnated as Dagon? And we'll get into the new JJK episode in a second. But I made that video and everyone was like, Nick is the king of making 20 minute videos about nothing. And I was like, uh oh, what do you mean? Uh -oh. And I was like, I was like, I kind of get it. I do because I can take an idea and I can expound about it yeah. for 20 minutes very easily. Yeah. Especially as like when, as it pertains to YouTube. And here's a little, here's a little peek behind the curtain. The longer the video, the more money it makes you. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. I think all of us like content creators, especially TikTokers, yeah. are being framed as yappists mm -hmm. because TikTok for people who don't know, won't pay you if your TikTok is shorter than a minute long. Yes. So your video has to be at least 60 seconds or you make no money off of it. Yeah. So now I'm yapping my ass off even when I only have 20 seconds of content. I can make 20 <laughs> seconds of content, 61 seconds of content so goddamn easily. Yeah. Like I, uh, listen, it, it is a superpower of uh -huh. mine to be like, that's an idea. How do we make that a 25 minute, 300 clip video? And mm -hmm. I can do it every, and I do it, that's twice now. Danny has already dropped water into his lap twice now. He achieved piss boy status Five seconds after sitting down, ladies and gentlemen. I'm pissing. I'm, I'm just pissed. You are so pissed, you are physically pissing. <laughs> yeah. It's always that Boy, bottle, too. That's what's getting you. Yeah, it's just the bottle. It's not piss. It, it's it, not my piss it, that does this. I mean, what you, do you mean it's always that bottle? Like, objectively, yes. Yeah. All right. That's the the, the root of all of your piss Wha issues. I'll allow it, but watch yourself, Is Connor. that bottle. So, anyways... <laughs> I've been catching yap allegations yeah. because everyone was like, Nick, wow, the king of clickbait or like the king of 25 minute videos about anything, like yeah. nothing. And I, I took it really to heart. It hurts. I was, like, I was like, why would you say that? And I, like, I, made a, I made a comment. I was like, just watch the entire video. Yeah. No yapping detective. All information was necessary. Yeah. And I'm going I'm to be real. 
the way I get to some route, like the way I get to some destinations, a little bit circuitous. Uh-huh. I'm a storyteller, right. all right? That's what I do. Yeah. But I don't yap. Uh-huh. And, and so, but then people, people are all responding to the, like the comment in droves being like, hey, we like you because of the yapping. Yeah. Like, we like the 25 minute videos. Like we just want to listen to your voice. And I'm like, I was just yeah. you on a ledge gun to your head. I, like there's no yap in here. And everyone's I like, went, neck, neck, neck. I went through so many stages of grief. I yeah, was like, I'm going to, I was like the, the second I saw it, it was like 400 likes. It was like, Nick is the king of making videos about nothing. And I was like, everyone hates me. And then I opened the comments and they're like, everyone was like, he just do be yammering sometimes. And I was like, Oh no. But then the majority of the comments were like, yeah, that's why we watch them. They're like, I don't yeah. want to fucking, because I could make a seven minute video and be like, Dagon is Rico Ammonai. It's uh-huh. because their outfits are kind of the same. But I paint you a picture. You know what right? though? You know what sucks? The majority of comments don't matter. It's that three that call you Japanese. Absolutely. That really, Japanese that really get to you. Boy. I got Japanese. I got this dude's favorite app is Yap Chat. <laughs> I'm it's it's a disease. You get one yapper in your comments, it just explodes it's just, like wildfire. It's like contagious, like it's yeah, horrible, yeah. Super viral. It's good you shut that shit down while you could. Oh yeah, yeah. I got right ahead of it. I also don't like read that I read my YouTube comments because like it sorts by most liked, and usually right. most liked is nice. Yeah. I, but like when I start getting down to like three, four likes, I'm like, all right, I gotta get out of here. Yeah. That's where the meme, <laughs> that's where the meanies are. Yeah, that's when like they start coming out of the corner, like, so we don't like your kind around here. Here. Just dragging pipes along yeah. the virtual wall. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. He just gets some hoodlum in a little bowler hat. And he's just like, why don't you try xxsexify.com? Yeah, and you're like, I don't, I don't know what you get out of here, bots. Yeah, and you're, you're like, like <laughs> sexy and nice, and you're like, why does this have 94 likes? Yeah. What happened? I had such a smart bot attack me not really attack me but like on all of my things because i knew she was a bot it was mm-hmm. like a prof- love that you still gave her gender though well it was like a, a profile pic of like a half naked lady as it like always is six six videos with fake views like nice. three comments per video six hundred thousand views yeah. um and all the videos that she was commenting on of mine so nice just real nice just like all right danny this is what i come here for and i'm like all right, Cassandra, why not? I'll and, take it. And I'll fucking take it. It was sweet. Everyone like was commenting under it, like bottler. And I was like, you leave her alone. I love the concept. There's like somebody's being nice in your comments and everyone's like, liar. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> That's gotta be a code. But so like, I was like, you know what? Let her stay. Why not? Yeah, why not? And then one day after she built up a rapport with my viewership. Love the idea me, of her just like slowly like galvanizing people in your comments. It was a, it was such a long game because mm-hmm. then she was like, hey, just started like knitting sweaters like on my page. Check it out if you're interested. And it's like a Tenmu link like Always. in her bio. Always. And I'm like. Cassandra, you slippery little whore. Why not that it wasn't porn? I feel like it's almost I know. always porn. It's Temu. Temu's so fucking like, I don't know. Mm. Temu freaks me out. It's I hate weird. how you say Temu. Temu. Don't Tem- like that. What? Timu? Timu? Temu is. Who says it to me? Where would I hear it? That's genuinely very <laughs> right? fair. As somebody who was in a half Chinese relationship, te- oh, you fucking, you're in my head. You, you always know, get in my- All I do is say the way I think it's said, mm. and then you act like I fuck you up. Oh my God. It's just, I, I, you, you get in my head. You're ro- not Roger rabbiting me. You're- Bugs Bunny. You're Bugs Bunnying me you so fucking no badly. You have no conviction. I do, <laughs> I've been, I fold. <laughs> I'm such a fold. shill for the people you're that- You're such a wet noodle. You're, you know, you're right, it is Temu. Yeah. Temu, guys, don't go to Temu. It's bad Temu for you. Temu and Jiu-Jitsu Kaisen. Jiu-Jitsu. I fucking don't need to start that again. People loved our Dillick bit, by the way. Our Dillick? Oh, Diluc? Yeah. Or whatever we settled yeah, on? Yeah, I, I do not remember what we settled yeah, on. I have no goddamn We'll do that bit every single week. I'm going back to the fucking wipeout thing. Good, because you can't do it, Nick. I, yeah, I, I know what you're going to say. You simply can't, kid. What? We've done many things together, right? Yeah. We've explored I guess. Each, everything from skiing to exploring each other's bodies. We've done it all. Yeah. What have I ever been bad at? <laughs> Pronunciation. Not fair. <laughs> Not a physical feat. Not a physical feat. Um, look, you excelled at skiing, and that was infuriating for sure. I excelled at snowboarding. You excelled at snowboarding as well. Which, by the way, so used to be a professional skier. The idea of me uh, excelling you at skiing. used to be a professional everything. I like don't believe you anymore. What do you mean? You used to be a professional boxer. I used to fall down professionally, did, did, whatever that means. Did not used to be a professional boxer. You I boxed. say that I boxed. You said you box professionally. Amateur boxing. 
Check the minutes, everybody, because Nick has 100% said he boxes professionally. If I, pro if I box professionally, I wouldn't be doing this. That's what I'm if saying. If I was boxing in the WBC, I wouldn't be here. That's I was an amateur boxer. I was 11 and 5. Okay, so you skied professionally? Yes. That I did do. The falling down thing is me referring to doing big air. I used to ski big air. Just because you don't understand the things I say, Daniel. <laughs> You're doesn't too mean, much of a professional it doesn't mean at everything. One thing. One thing uh, I've been a professional at. Now I'm a professional yapper. Yeah, I got you, that much going for you me. You're goddamn right you are. I'm fucking fluent in Japanese, apparently. <laughs> yeah. All right? But it just because just I, I, I was a pro skier and I'd never snowboarded, uh, though. Right. But I picked that you had also never snowboarded. Right. And you're like, I'm going to nail this. And I was that like, you and me. fucking meatball down the can. You fucking <laughs> rolled. You butt slid the whole way. It was just face ass, face ass, face <laughs> ass. The whole I way. just, I, I immediately picked it up. So Daniel. Yeah. What have you not? Why can't, can't I do wipeout? Do? I, because it's rigged. No one can do wipeout. Plenty of people do wipeout. No one like just clears it. It's not like American Ninja Warrior where the goal is to do like a flawless run. Can we talk and about American Ninja Warrior? Do it. So easy. What are you saying? So easy. It's not easy. It's Sa incredibly easy. You're done by the salmon ladder, guaranteed. Salmon ladder? Okay. Guaranteed. No, no, salmon ladder I can do. The the like things that require tons of grip strength, like those fucking rock climber fingers, uh -huh. that I can't do. No? No, so so there is a in Santa Ana, which is uh -huh. like an hour south of LA. Right. Um, there is a park. It's like an American Ninja Warrior yeah. Park that has all the shit. Yeah. I did it all. I know. This everyone uh, who's a longtime listener knows that this was like podcast episode three yeah you we're talking about that? the boy bro, the man with the, <laughs> the boy breaking his ankle yeah <laughs> it's my favorite bit of the whole pod it is fantastic here's my most toxic male trait mm -hmm. it's probably thinking that i can do the warped wall absolutely no problem so i didn't think i could do it found out i can I, it seems so easy. It seems like the easiest obstacle there. If you get a significant run up and you get like, it, you just need two good steps. Yeah. Two good steps and you're up there. Yeah. You just need to Danny or tall people. Like I'm yeah. not like, it's like, if you're like above six foot, the warp wall is the easiest thing on earth. Mm -hmm. If you're, if you're, if you're north of what would that be? 72 inches. Yeah. You know, whatever six foot is in meters right. or whatever the fuck. Then it's like actually kind of difficult. Yeah. I can do it like one out of three times. Yeah. If you give me a good run up, like a good length, I, if I can get to full speed, I'm up it every time. You get three attempts, so that works. Yeah, it's fucking yeah. layup, dude. No, that one seems so easy. The this only one I can't do is like when you have to jump onto something and like snag it with your fingertips. <laughs> yeah. If I can like throw my arm around something, I'm on there. But those are all meant to be beaten by athletic people. Yeah. Wipeout is meant to make like how Physical comedies. Yeah, like physical comedies. It's yeah. like j Three Stooges, the game. Yeah, yeah, but here's the thing, Daniel. They don't invite athletes onto Wipeout. Right. You're right. It is, it's housewives. Yeah. It's men in their 50s who are like, oh, I still got it. I played varsity <laughs> high school football. Yeah. It's like, you have a beer a day. Yeah. Like, you are not going to rip through here. I, I'm making it through Wipeout. You're breaking both legs at the knee on the balls. <laughs> on the big balls. You're taking one step. Your face planning and then the heels of your feet are touching the back of your head. How physically <laughs> like, injured do you have to get for them not to air your head? <laughs> I think if somebody folds it like a backwards folding chair, I think if someone's ass touches their shoulder blades. <laughs> Does the they, idea, they the can idea it. is like we want get we want to get people like just kind of hurt. If I just like like <laughs> both my knees are backwards, compound fractures, I'm like <laughs> if you, like, we just ruined a man's life. If you jump on, your knees break, and you're like, I'm stuck in the ball! I'm stuck in the ball! <laughs> just stab through it. My knee shorts popped it! My knee shorts popped it! <laughs> he, couldn't, he couldn't keep his weight up. He fucking drowned. <laughs> just, why is there a shark in the water? Like... Like how how physically injured do you have to get for them just not to air your episode? I can't, I can't see right now. <laughs> I laughed my vision away. I just imagine you like, yeah, I'm Nick from uh, blah blah blah. I was about to dox you. Yeah, I'm, I'm Nick from California, and now I'm about to crush wipeout. Let's go! Oh! <laughs> my insides are my outsides. <laughs> No. The back of my head is the front of my neck. <laughs> my favorite would be like, my favorite would be like, you you wipe out. It looks like super nonchalant. You're yeah. like swim out, and they're like, how'd you feel? And you're like, ah, I fucking lost all vision. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> if the world is darkness, I love when the people in a uh, American Ninja Warrior like do a crazy wipeout, come up just bleeding all over. Yeah. They have some like hot like host being like, so like what what are the emotions right now? Talking through me, he's like. Well, Cassandra, 
fuck. You know, I, I was really hoping my, my youth group would... Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like I invited all of my all my youth my youth yeah. uh, my youth group here today and they're over there they're playing the guitar and I got I got out on the first obstacle. Th- this guy just praying he'll ever read again. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's just like I I um just trying just try to put his eye back in. Like. Yeah, where where are you? So yeah, um I can do wipeout and that's our cold open. Thank no you, ladies way. and gentlemen. Thank you, uh, thank you for being here. This is yeah, thank anonymous. you, wipeout, for sponsoring this. I listen. I swear to God, like, use the power. Use the power of this podcast. I'll do. I'll try. Dude, we should email NBC or whoever it is. I'll Let's fucking go. do it. How do you how do you get on Wipeout? It can't be that hard, I right? I guarantee you, if I put my mind to it, I could get on Wipeout. Let's get on I, Wipeout. I, 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 feel, I see genuinely, it's a win-win. Yeah. That's a win-win. If people, <laughs> if people hate influencers, yeah. okay? And you get to watch me get hurt. Yeah. That's a fucking win-win. We should, I'm going to pull every string I can mm-hmm. to get both of us on Wipeout. It's probably filmed around here. I bet we can do it. I yeah, I think we could, we could probably get on. All right, listen, listen. If you want to see it, then email NBC yeah. or so. Just email NBC at Gmail. Do you even like Wipeout? Uh, this no, spiraled. not really. I don't really watch it either. Uh, but I'll do it. I'll just like yeah. to prove that I can. Yeah, I'll do it. for sure. It would, you know, it would be funny mm-hmm. if we did like a bet and the loser had to go on Wipeout. That'd be sweet. Like if we pulled strings and we're like, can one of us be on Wipeout? And yeah. they said yes. And we'd be like, give us a week. Yeah. And then it's like, Nick's going on. We got to figure out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We got to figure out like who, like who's winning, yeah. who's losing here. That would be good. That would be the best thing ever for a pod if, like, at, from, like, that what point on. Every, killed on, you know? <laughs> Wipeout's first death. Yeah. That, yes, yeah. that would be huge. But if, like, what if we somehow manage to make our gimmick that every time one of us loses a game, that loser has to go on, like, the floor is lava, wipe out Survivor. American Ninja yeah. Warrior Survivor. <laughs> Naked and afraid, yeah. <laughs> it's like, you didn't know how tall Lego she was. You have to be on Survivor for 40 days. They brought back X Factor for you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's the only one I would hate to go on. Uh-huh. Survivor also sucks, but, like... I can do Survivor. It's just emotional manipulation. It's just, I they don't feed day. you, though. So- I figured out. <laughs> yeah, I guess yeah, they the do. The cut would be insane. I guess they all do figure it out. Also, the excuse is just like, I would put on 20 pounds before Survivor and just lose it. Yeah, for sure. That'd be great. Mm-hmm. What a gig. All right. Hello. Welcome. We have a lot to talk about this week, but uh, Daniel doubted my physical abilities, so we had to make that the cold opening. Hello, everybody. I am Nicholas Connor, also known as NC Amber 23, also known as the Weeb Commander, and uh, it's Christmas season. Daniel, who are you? What? No, it season. isn't. It is. I'm Danny. Mariah Modder. Carey got left out, of, got, got out of her S, like SCP cage. <laughs> I'm Danny Mata, mm-hmm. uh, otherwise known as Dmata Three on TikTok, uh, and it's Thanksgiving season. Uh, objectively, objectively doesn't exist. Objectively. Listen, actually, I, I don't even know why I'm taking this side. I'm a big Thanksgiving guy. Yeah. I have everybody over for Friendsgiving. You're coming over for sure. I do, I do a big hosty meal. I get to like have everybody. In. I'm like, oh my family. I literally, like, I yeah, feel, Nick adopts an Italian accent. This is me familia. The closest I ever feel to like about my mother is like I have like a bunch of all my friends over. I cook a big meal and I'm like, good. Yeah, good. Everybody's here. Everyone, <laughs> yeah. everyone's home from the war. It's great. But yes, uh, this is Doctor's Anonymous, and we have a lot to talk about this week. Uh, most importantly, last week we uh, we were looking for news. We were scouring for yeah. news, more or like, and um, we stumbled upon an article comparing this new Netflix original anime mm-hmm. to the Iraq War. And we're like, that's fucking hilarious. Yeah. Because there's no way we've already made an anime about the Iraq War. You drawn. You drawn and plugged it. Mm. Beep. Okay. Um, Iraq War. Iraq War. But we're like, the concept that there's already been an anime made about the Iraq War is hilarious, especially yeah. when you put it against the fact that it's based in the Astro Boy world. Yeah. So we're like, okay, cool. Astro Boy world has the Iraq War. Let's look into it. The anime that we're talking about is Pluto. And not only is it about the Iraq War, yeah. but also it's really good it's like astounding it's really good it's like, <laughs> it's, it, like it will probably be in the running for anime of the year pretty easily it's really really good and i'm so happy because i was so afraid that it was gonna be like pseudo smart mm-hmm. like when we saw the trailer i remember telling you this is either gonna be really good or really pretentious yeah 
It's just good. It's just like it's really good. Just a sprawling study on human emotion. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to give like a spoiler free just like synopsis of what it's about? Yeah. So basically the Iraq war happens. Um, the exact like uh, imagine the premise of the Iraq war. And for those of you who don't know the premise of the Iraq war, I guess I'll go over it very briefly. Amer basically, America was like, oh, Iraq, you have weapons of mass destruction. And they were like, no, we don't. No, we don't. <laughs> and then America was like. We'll see about but that. But you got oil. And then they, yeah, well, bingo. But And so then they decided to pop on over and they <laughs> Sorry, were like. Sorry, did I spoil the twist of the Iraq yeah, War? Yeah, that was kind of the payoff. <laughs> yeah, that was like, that's the punchline. Yeah. Um, but then America popped over and they were like, where are the, where are the weapons at? And they were yeah. like, we can't find them. But the entire like American militarization complex was like, we found them. We, we got them. And yeah. then eventually somebody was like, hey, George, did we ever find them? And he was like, nope, we didn't. But we're already there. And you wouldn't believe it. There's terrorists there and they don't have democracy. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to stick around. So we did for two decades. Now, Pluto, same thing, except substitute weapons for robots of mass destruction. And you have basically the plot of what Pluto's talking about. And is it actually Iraq or no? It is Persia. So cool. like, oh, that's cool. As thinly veiled yeah. as because like Iraq in that entire area used to be Persia. Right, right. Uh, and then the invading force is the United States of Thracia. Right. So it's not, it's not the U S yeah, it's, it's, it's the U S C not the, the U S a for anyone wondering why I'm asking about this show that I allegedly watched. Mm. I watched the first episode cause I thought when Nick, so we knew from last week, we were going to watch this. Yeah. And then like a few days ago, Nick, you were like, you got to watch Pluto. It's borderline profound. Mm -hmm. He said, and then a few days later, you text everybody, our editors, me end of list. And we're like, you guys all, everyone here has to watch Pluto. It's very good. I thought like two episodes had come out. Mm -hmm. Nope. Eight episodes. Netflix an, model, baby. All an hour long. The eight long hours. hours of a goddamn show. I, every episode feels like an individual movie because every episode so is long. kind of a sprawling, like, like study on a certain yeah. character within the universe. It, it, you were like, it's a long hour. Yeah. And I was like, what the hell does that mean? You were right. Long hour. But still really good. Yeah. Like, not in an insulting way. Um, but yeah, so I only had time to watch the first episode because I watched it last night. Mm. Um, and yeah, that's why I'm asking. Because in the first episode, they don't really talk about a, a Persia at all. No, like, that, that's the second episode, which yeah. is just as good as the first episode. Right. So basically what happens is... a. Me um, we're just going to call it America. America invi invades Iraq and they send a bunch of robots to fight the war. But in this world, robots can't kill humans. Mm -hmm. So all war is basically robots versus robots. And yeah. they're like, fucking, you guys figure it out. However, in this world, robots are also considered equal, but they're not like really like there's, yeah. like, there's like, they're like, oh, robots have civil rights. But like when a robot dies, they scrap it. They reuse its parts when it like nobody gives a shit. Yeah. Like humans, like human criminals will just attack robots because they can't fight back. Yeah. So it's like. It's also kind of like a study on like racism and like the civil rights movement, yeah. but it's also like tied into the Iraq war. So America goes to Persia uh, and they're like, where are these weapons? And essentially the same thing happens in Persia that happens in Iraq. We bomb the ever living fuck out of it. And then we're like, you guys need us now. And then like a, lo a lot of people who are living incredibly standard and democratic lives prior have their lives significantly altered by the fact that a country with more power was looking for weapons of mass destruction that don't exist. Yeah. So now there's an entity that is maybe a robot that's killing the seven most powerful robots on earth, all of which can be turned into weapons of mass destruction and the people who lobbied for robot rights. Yeah. Well, all that's true. Yes. It's interesting because, so the plot of the first episode, um, just the bare bones plot, it's very Blade Runner, right? So yeah. this German robot that everyone loves, like Lamont. La, yeah. Yeah, Lamont. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves him. He's this, he's like Smokey the Bear, essentially. Yeah, exactly. Um, and he's murdered. And he's just this big, like, beep boop ass looking robot mm -hmm. who advocates for, like, the environment. He, like, stops forest fires, does all this. He's murdered. And the world's kind of, like, devastated because they, like, loved him. I and cried for that. I cried for that goddamn robot. Did you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's really, mm -hmm. well, that's like, I love the concept of a robot that advocates for the environment. Mm -hmm. That's very fascinating. Yeah. Because the robot doesn't really need the environment, does no. it? You it's know? also it's like your construction actively required the destruction of said environment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's like that concept alone is very interesting. And I also love like you feel the impact of that death all over. Like everyone's talking about it. Yeah. Everyone's like mourning it and all that. Like, but you were like, they're targeting the seven most powerful robots in the world yeah 
and he's one of them. That's so strange mm -hmm. that he's one of them. So this big Smokey the Bear ass robot. Okay, so in episode two, you learn that he was in the piece, like the piece with it's called the fact finding mission, uh -huh. uh, which is like what it's like what the Green Zone. If you've ever seen the movie with Matt Damon, it's what the Green Zone is about. Um, it's like the fact finding, like us sending people to like try and find the weapons of mass destruction, and he's right. in it, uh -huh. and they're talking like, how many did you kill? And he's right. like. Th like so he's like 3,000 robots yeah. like it's like all of these robots or like the most powerful robots ever made just like wiping out these like lesser robots yeah like thousands at a time right and it's the thing is like robots have consciousness they all have ai and more advanced robots in this universe will replicate what humans do like drinking tea or yeah. like having marriages to get closer to humanity yeah and now it's gotten to the point where people like astro boy who's known as Fuck, what is his name? Goobo. No, he's Adam. Yeah. Um, Adam, and yes, Goobo. <laughs> ding, you, ding, bingus. Um, <laughs> that's, that's my boy. Um, so it's like they get closer and closer to humanity <laughs> until eventually it's like they're imperceptible between humans. And I love that you love Ding Bingus. I just love, <laughs> I just love like this very profound, somber <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's like the detective, the Blade Runner detective robot goes up to him and he's like, we have to bring you in for questioning. I'd... No, you're just a child, but sometimes you have to make mature decisions. Ding bingus. Ding bingus. <laughs> ubi, ubi, one kunubi. Yeah, ubi, dooba, nooba. Ubi, kunubi, nooba. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fucking incredible. We need more ridiculous. We just need to make an anime yeah. that's like incredibly, like way yeah. too real. Like, it's like, it's like, you know, like your, your spider idea, yeah, but man. everybody in that like short story just stupid ass names. I, yeah, I just want like like Akira, but everyone's got a really long like sloppy name mm -hmm. where it's just like Shulubi Doo Magoo. And every single time they have to say the whole yeah, thing. They yeah. say the whole thing, and there's one guy that's just like Slurp. Like, <laughs> just one. Like, it's literally it's um the fucking Poe. Uh, what are the Wally? No, 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 no. no. Uh, the is it's not the Care Bears. Teddy, the Teddy Teletubbies. Teletubbies. Teletubbies yeah. It's like, la, la. Yeah. And then one's just Poe. <laughs> and Poe's po. that motherfucking dude. Yeah, Poe's got that shit on him. So anyways, yeah. eight episodes, one hour long. The animation is incredible. Movie quality. It's really stunning. Yeah. And like, I got a new TV, like very pretty new TV. Mm -hmm. This has been the first thing that's really like put it to work. That's shown, you're and like, I, okay, this is worth it. And I watched Jujutsu Kaisen on it. Like, I don't know if Netflix is like, I think Crunchyroll like compresses the shit out of it. I think so. I think so. It The colors aren't as good as this shit was. No, like, I just think it's better animated popping. than JJK. It's beautiful. Yeah. The CG is a little, a lot. <laughs> CG's really good. It's good, but it's like, like the fire will look real. Yeah. But it, is in anime. What you're saying so is- So it's like, you're looking at real fire in an good. anime. Yeah. It's Uncanny Valley. It's Uncanny Valley. It's like yeah. the wrong kind of fire, I would say. Yeah. And there's a lot of it, but it like, the story is incredible. The first episode, out of fucking nowhere- Rips your heart out. Changes plot like <clears throat> halfway through and becomes about like a blind composer for movies. You watched it in sub, I watched in dub. Yeah. The dub was exceptional. You thought it was Chris Sabat. I did think it was Chris Sabat yeah. giving the fucking performance of a lifetime. It was just a different man. See, that was, I was so perplexed. I was you're like, oh, you're like, Chris Sabat gave the performance of his lifetime. Yeah. I was like, who would he be? Yeah. I was like, who in the, is he the robot or the old man? Because the old man does like a Vegeta ass kind of like mm. thing where he's just like, he's like, North number two, go get me my tea weapon. Yeah. Um, But it's, really really good and yeah. i'm so excited to watch more episode two is also very very good just as sad is it literally astro like okay if i read the entire original astro boy manga mm -hmm. is it just this no, or is this like inspired by astro boy is this a sequel to astro boy astro boy is like it's in the universe of astro boy and adam is supposed to be astro boy but like it's mostly just based on the fact like astro boy is a robot made by a genius scientist to like replicate a human yeah and, like that's kind of like his kind of thing is like he's a superhero child because he's a robot yeah and so like the concept is like we're gonna take this abstract concept of humans and robots living with civil rights and like a, a genius like one of the most powerful robots ever being made being this little boy and we're gonna expand that to like have a discussion about like real life topical right events. gotcha yeah. is astro boy good I mean, if you want to watch an anime from the 60s, like it's like, it's, yeah. here's the thing. Is the Hitchcock's fucking The Crow movie good? What is it? What am I, what am I thinking about here? The birds. The birds. Is yeah. that good? I think. 
Have you seen it? No. Okay. Have you have you seen, seen Citizen Kane? I've seen. Yeah. Is it good? Or is it just like everybody was like, oh, that came early. Pretty good. I don't know. And you're. I don't want to get canceled. Oh, because oh, the big Citizen, Citizen Kane. Kane's so boring. Oh, all of the people <laughs> will come out of their fucking graves and be like, no, I've seen Citizen Kane. It was incredible. You know what the greatest movie of all time is? Uh, I'm, I'm going to say it just so people don't get mad at me. Oh, boy. Which too fast? fast, too furious. There it is. Greatest movie ever <laughs> made. <it>. Everyone, listen. <laughs> now, now you can understand. My movie take means nothing. All right, but yeah. none of yours mean anything either. Just because you like something Jesus older doesn't Christ. mean you have a better take than me. Go fuck yourself. We've come with so much energy this week. I, you have to. Um, you gotta. You gotta. I'm gonna say about dinner you. after this. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but fucking no. But there are old things that like really hold up. You ever see the thing? No. I just seemed Bill Murray. No, no. Feel no. like I feel like that was a Bill Murray situation. No, no. Um, I'm trying to think of like an old thing. You have like Jaws rules. Jaws does Jaws, rule. Jaws doesn't just rule for a movie in the 70s. Mm. You know, Jaws just rules. Well, yeah, like, like Star Wars is still good. Well, that's what I mean. Like, so that's what I'm asking. I'm saying, Astro Boy. People is, are like, oh, Casablanca, the greatest role. Shut the fuck up. I know. Shut the fuck. Who cares? Well, that's what I'm wondering. Is Astro Boy Casablanca or is it Jaws? Sort of. It's like it's like a good story. Have you like, seen it? Astro Boy, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I've been fucking, I, I stu- I've studied the game. It's yeah. good. Like, it's not, I'm not going to yeah. sit here and be like, oh, Astro Boy's mid. But right. like, it's like, we've come so far. Like, you can Would look you at, you say can... Hunter Hunter is like, like holds up for a modern anime? Oh, yeah. Because Hunter Hunter like reminds me of an Astro Boy kind of vibe. Because it's about a young boy? Young boy, similar art style, like classic big eye ass anime. I guess. But in, in terms of like, or like Yu Yu Hakusho, where it's like everyone who asks if it's good has the asterisk See, of, is it good now or is it just good? You're not going back far enough. Yeah. Like, okay, I think there was a massive revolution in animation in the, the late 80s and early 90s. And that's when we got Dragon Ball. Like Dragon Ball is like, Fist of the North Star exists directly on the cusp because that was like 85, 87. Um, everything that came before 85 is fine there's tons of fine like ultraman and you know like oh, like not even ultraman i don't know i don't know why i said ultraman but like like that, i mean Boy. It, it counts i yeah yeah go on like all these things that came prior to like 85 like fist of the north star yeah. uh yeah, dragon fist ball of the north star. or like that was that was like a yeah, big right, turning point right, animation right. where like we were starting to tell gritty cool like really yeah, intriguing adult really yeah, adult realistic stories through the medium of animation like astro boy is really good but it's nothing like this like it's very much like it's very much meant for kids yeah right and right, so right. like it's really it's like it's great you gotta acknowledge the ogs but at the end of the day like oh i'm doing my third astro boy what like no fucking yeah. nobody's going back to astro boy <laughs> i want to start like reacting to astro boy or something just there's gotta you be can? there's gotta be some fucking like under a rock community that would just crawl its way out and be like Astro Boy is back. I mean, it's like literally it's back. Pluto actually. I, I mean, like th- this is the most yep. back Astro Boy has ever been. Yeah. But let me see when it came out actually, because I'm like gonna try and do like a. It's like black and white, so like like maybe 40s. It came out. Astro Boy came out in oh my god, yeah, 1963 is oh, when 63. Astro Boy came out. So they would be. 80? Yeah. Like, my mother was born in 1960. Yeah. But to enjoy Astro Boy, you would have had to have been 12. So, like, right. 70, 75? That's true. You're going to get the geriatrics on TikTok being like, yeah, what's my childhood? <laughs> in Japanese? Yeah. Like, have fun finding Astro Boy in English. True. That's very fair. Yeah. Um, I also like, this is the second week in a row we've made mention of Ultraman. Because it's weirdly big. I don't like, I just, it, <laughs> I ever know. since coming back from China, it stuck with me that just like all they loved was Ultraman. It's so weird. So Ultraman weird. and Kamen Rider. I get people messaging me being like, when are you going to make Kamen Rider content? And I'm like, fucking never. <laughs> they actually, so they came about? out with, I got paid to go to LA or what was it? Comic-Con or what's somewhere? Anime LA. What's the, what's the expo? There we go. Anime Expo in LA. We uh, did. To promote Common Rider. No, this was oh. last year. This was this was before Daniel. Yeah. Um, and so I was there promoting their new anime Futo PI, which is actually pretty good. It's based in the world of Common Rider. That was back when my Bandai Connect actually still worked at Bandai. Um, so Futo PI, pretty good. But like the Super Sentai thing, a lot of people in our comments were like, yeah, it's really good. I guess not for us, not me. Yeah. Like I love WWE. I don't even know why I use WWE as like as a reference. I've only ever watched one WrestleMania. I did it with your mother, and I was like, low-key. 
It was hype. I could get behind this. My roommates were like, are we doing that again this year? And I was like, I was like, that was my mom. That wasn't like a thing I put together, which we can. The fact that the Karen is just like, let's fucking like, I need to see John Cena's final WrestleMania. Love that about her. I'll have her over again. Let's do it. Yeah. I'm kind of sad. I didn't get to see all three days. I didn't get to see John Cena get his revenge match. I know. I can't believe it was three days. Anyway. Over like 10 hours of content. Yeah. Lots and lots of content. Nobody puts out more content than WWE. True. That is an industry. Every week, forever, no off season. Wild. I don't even get, like, how do you, how do you even feign interest that long? And it's not even like, they don't even do like an NFL ticket kind of deal. It's just on TV free. Yep. They do pay-per-view. Unless it's WrestleMania. Unless it's WrestleMania. They do like a pay-per-view every month or two, but like, whatever. You get the highlights next week at the regular one. I was buying it into things. People were doing backflips. There was that big tall girl with like all the black around her eyes who was like, Mm. Yeah, I think her name is Mommy, or everyone calls her Mommy. Maybe. So she actually is wrestling against one of my. Well, she was like she has like a big rival right now with Tia Trinidad, who's one of my mutuals. Oh, he's a crazy. huge Naruto fan. Oh, that's. So I could sick. probably get us to a WrestleMania low key. That would like my mom could die. I actually, finally. I probably should. DM. My mom could move on. I actually probably should DM Tia about that. Yeah, that should be. Yeah, that'd be fun. Nice. Because we, we damn about our love for Sakura a fair amount. That'd be sick. Yeah. That'd be unbelievably cool. Yeah. This is just me name dropping. Yeah. That I know now people I know in WWE. what this is. Um, so I was going to do like a couple because I'm up to episode four in Pluto, but I'm just not yeah. going to spoil it. So go watch it. Uh, it's we'll, get, sick. we'll give you a week or two. We're like me and Danny will talk about as much as we've seen. Yeah. Because like Danny is the limiting factor in this usually. I'll watch a good chunk of Pluto. Going to react to it? No, no, no one no, wants to see there's, it. There's literally no market there whatsoever. Yeah, I like just found out that my demographic is like a, like officially 70% female. Yep. And they all like they all like nostalgic stuff. No one cares when I do new boy shit. I was going to say somebody <laughs> recommended an anime for you to react to and I was like that is a really good idea. Blue Exorcist? No, I, I mean that's fine, but like I there was like it was way more girl coded and now I cannot think of what it is. Case study of Vanitas. Have you no Nana? Have you seen Nana? No, what you is that? need to react to Nana. What is Nana? Nana, first off, one of the greatest anime well, manga of all time. Oh, is you did this shit to me with Angel Beats. Hold on. No, okay. Nana, listen, Nana and Angel Beats are completely different. Uh, Nana outsold One Piece, and I think it was 2007 or 2008. The genre. Okay, first off. Yeah. This looks sexy as hell. It's about why, two why friends. Why is it so goth? It's because it was like from 2007, 2008, I believe. This is angry looking as fuck. The genre is music though. Yeah. What about, is this? It's about two girls who, I've never seen it, but it's about two girls who are magicians. Or not magi- magicians. Magicians. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a magical girl anime. Uh, musicians. <laughs> uh, and I think one of them's like super goth and one of them is is not goth and they're friends and they make music. I don't fucking know. I've never seen it. Ah. Uh. Uh, but women love it. Do it, they? It, huge 47 women. episodes. You're out of your alcoholic mind, okay. Nick. Yeah. Money. Money. What, money. First off. Money. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Let's not act like you haven't raked it in over FMAB. I guess so. Your, your average views have gone up exponentially. They have. I'm exponentially. Doing, I'm doing quite well. You're doing quite well, <laughs> but we won't talk about that. That's a forbidden topic. Relax. Forbidden topic, <laughs> Relax. Daniel. So anyways, go watch Pluto. Uh, it's very good. Do you want to talk about? Yeah, what's next? I mean, uh, next in my notes is Undead Unluck. Sure. You want to talk about it? Yeah. Fine. You're losing favor. That sucks, huh? You were. It doesn't suck, but I mean, it sucks that it's not. Episode one, I was like so hyped. You were I was like, so this excited. Is, you're like, this is my thing. Yeah, this is the anime of this season. Of the all time. It's just okay. So I like far. it. It's fun. I liked that episode. Yeah. I love it. It was okay. a fun fight. I'm trying to remember really what happened. Uh, the So I'll, I'll read you my live notes. This, this is why I have notes. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, because like it's a whole week. But so little happened. I have notes on Shangri-La because stuff happened. I guess. Um, the grenade mid monologue made me chuckle. Yeah, that was funny. Uh, this, but here's the thing. Okay. Maybe I have a higher level of tolerance based off the, because here's the thing. You watch objectively girlier anime. Right. And girlier anime is usually sans fan service. Right. And I was like, this show has fan service. I don't mind. Because here's the thing. It's not fan service for the sake of fan service. It's not like, all right, here's the thing. Nami, like, Nami showering. There's a Nami showering yeah. scene every single arc in one oh my piece. God. Every single one. And it's yeah. gotten to the point where people power, like, they're like, they power scale, which is the best Nami showering, like, yeah. scene. That's Personally, fun. for me, Thriller Bark, but people say, after Wano, best Nami showering. Oh, wow. So, but, so we just got our Nami showering scene in Whole Cake Island. So it's like, every single arc, it's like, oh, we're so dirty. And then it's like, na- like Nami and whatever girl is right. with Nami, go shower. So, right. This season, well, this like arc, it's a rabbit, 16 year old rabbit. So you're like, 
don't look at that. Yeah. But Nami, you know, super happy about this. Right. So like, but that's fan service for the sake of nothing. That's mm-hmm. like, hey, do we want to look at yeah. the boobies? There's not like a joke happening. No. It's not like to forward a romance or yeah. anything. Yeah. And it's like a good, another good example of that is like kind of like high school DXD where they fight and it's like, ah, oh, you slap my shirt open and now yeah. my titties are out. And right. it's like, and you're like, <laughs> well, you know, like I'm watching the show for fans. That's yeah. it. If you're watching a high school DXD or a high school of the dead, high school of the anything really, then you're like, okay, cool. Yeah. The boobies are out. Yeah. You know, and like, this is just, just, at that point it just becomes the genre. Yeah. Like if someone's like, oh, I'm not going to watch high school DXD cause I don't like fan service. Yeah. It's the equivalent of being like, I'm not going to watch Naruto because I don't like violence. Exactly. Like, fair. I mean, it's <laughs> you know? etchy. It's literally the, yeah. the the top, like the genre is etchy slash yeah. harem. Uh, so, but Undead Unlock, like I get that there's a lot of fan service because it's like, oh, I'm going to slip into your shirt and like, yeah. I'm going to hold you on my back with your shirt against like your, like your breast against my back for like yeah. the most unluck. But that's things like, it's for the most unluck, you know? Like it's like the level of embarrassment slash like her love of him, like playing into all of it. Like, I don't mind it. I mind some of them, like some, my tolerance Mm -hmm. becomes a lot higher if it's successfully funny or at least an attempt at humor. Like I've used Soul Eater where it's never trying to be funny. It's just like Blair's naked Mm -hmm. and it's like, okay. That's not me showering. They're like, it's been two episodes since we've seen a tit. Let's get one out there. Exactly. We got a quota hit people. Yeah, that's literally all it is Um, with this some jokes land other times it's like uh like what like if someone like the girl uh what like the russian chick the gina gina yeah Yeah. yeah. gina will say something like you know like oh you just like her because of her tits and then it'll cut to her and she's a classic gag it's just like yeah well that's why i'm like all right whatever like Mm -hmm. let's move it along guys I was like, like, it's the lazy ones growing up. Like, and I whatever. was like, how often are Japanese women talking about their boobs? And then I started dating an Asian woman who, you know, has all Asian friends. Yeah. And do they? About 50% of their conversations end up about tits. Really? Because here's the thing. There's a spectrum in our friend group of, of boobage. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to drop any names here, but drop the names, drop of, the addresses, drop the, pe- the nudes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Here, yeah, here we go. Stay, <laughs> yeah, put them up right now. I, uh, I, I, I airdrop to you them yeah. to you. Um, but you know, the spectrum, you know, in our friend group goes like from like G. Yeah. Down to like, down to like B, right? You know, like like a low B. Yeah. So they're like, like everyone's a like, everyone's like, oh, you got these big old hefty honking honkers, and it, it gets talked about a lot. Uh-huh. So I was like, oh my god, was anime accurate for the first time? To be fair, mm-hmm. your friend with G cups, mm-hmm. I hear about as if it's fucking the sword Excalibur itself. Well, here's the thing: how many, <laughs> how many Asian women you, guys you know talk with G-cups? about it so fucking much mm-hmm. when she's not here. Oh, we'll talk about it to her face. Yeah. I saw, I met her once and I didn't notice. And I like re- regret it more than I regret anything. I just, it speaks a lot to your character. I that you weren't immediately like, because I'd notice. <laughs> I'd a wooga. My I, eyes would come out of my head mm-hmm. in various sizes and you, ranges. You have the, the squiggle tongue. I yeah. go boy oy oing. The way you float <laughs> like, over like you yeah. were sniffing a pie. Yeah, you're like, like a, a pie dad, in the window. So I would. Flying. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The second we see her again, and like I'm gonna be on the hunt <laughs> for it. If I <laughs> fucking dab yeah. them up. Look, if I see it and if it's like you say, I'll I'll give a respectful boy oing. Yeah. But otherwise <laughs> it's just, it's just like, Danny just was that an onomatopoeia? Like yeah. you're just like I I need to leave. I'm I'm out. Yeah, but, but for those of you, we respect women's bodies and they I don't. I, oh, <laughs> well then, never mind. No, yes. But yeah, so it gets talked about a lot. And anime is very accurate. Yeah. Very, very accurate in that regard. So I don't know. Undead unluck. It's kind of fun. I'm enjoying it, it. Yeah, like what else? The end was good with how like that what? Can we do like a like a four episode? We're like what four episodes in? So let's do a let's do a quarter season check in oh, yeah. on where we are. All right. You have a new episode of every single show we're watching. What show are you watching first? JJK for sure, Easy obviously. Layout. Without that, that's 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 implied. Yeah, yeah. Everything else after that, where are you? So lining what's up? everything out like this? Pluto count. Yes. So like, Pluto, let's say let's say Pluto releases on a weekly schedule. Pluto first. Okay. And then it's. And then still Undead on Luck, I think, mm-hmm. because today when I watched Shangri-La, mm-hmm. I was like, I was so ready to be like, if this is like of the same caliber of the last two episodes, I'm just going to drop the show because yeah. I'm like, there's nothing to talk about. I'm dreading this show. Mm-hmm. I don't care. This episode turned it around. Why? So that's why I'm a little torn. 
Should we talk about Shangri-La? I mean, I don't know if I can undo it. I said, um, the power system is the perfect mix of magic and explanation. Uh, yeah. Brutal end uh, yeah. to the episode, hats off. Yeah, the, nice. I thing. love, I love a, oh. Yeah, that wasn't on purpose. I walk into so many puns on accident and it like, it makes me feel like I have a superpower of making jokes accidentally. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like more to the fact that you just like, Listen That's to me. That's just called being funny. I guess. <laughs> yeah. But like accidentally. Yeah. But like you also just listen. You're a great reader. I literally sent you the rules to our Airbnb and you're like, oh, this says we check out on January 15th. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, holy shit. Dorothy got so worried. She was like, how much did you fucking spend? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> how did I book a, did I book a mansion your, in Las Vegas for bank three months? Your is just drained. Yeah. Like, yeah. I would have fucking, I would have moved to Vegas. Yeah. I would have moved. You'd have to. You have you have a place there for months. Six bedroom house with yeah. a pool. Yeah, I'm fucking moving in there for a couple of months. Yeah. you kidding me? But I was like, I, yeah, so it was a copy and paste. So I was like, I wasn't worried about it, but yeah. Great reader, great reading comprehension, but also I feel like you just listen to me a lot. Yeah. So like you're just like, oh, that's funny that you said that, and I'm like, I didn't, I don't even know, I wasn't trying. Yeah, yeah. So brutal end, killing Gina, wild. Um, I thought she was gonna stick around because usually when Lolly get introduced, Lolly don't die. Yeah. Uh, unless you know you're Rebecca. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I've only ever seen two lollies die. Yeah. In my, all of my years of anime, uh -huh. I've only seen two lollies die. And those were the two of them. I guess they had to to secure that spot. That's the thing. I figured. I figured like Gino's gonna be like, oh, she there's another out. one. There's yeah. ten of them. You know, yeah. I figured like we would bump into another one. They'd be like, all right, save the lolly. But fucking nope, sixty five year old lolly, gone. It is the power system's interesting because I am like, I want to see how much mileage they can get out of the concept of nope. You know, love that we're rebranding. <laughs> Negating, negating as nope <laughs> but it's like but that's the power it's just like this no yeah you know because it's like they're doing a thing it's like they're doing like she creates invisible barriers right yeah. and those like all right cool that's a cool concept hers is unchanged yeah which is like i was like oh god how would you like the problem is they're like this is a cool power now how do we connect it to the way that this power system works in yeah, the universe right. that's kind of the issue they're like yeah oh He's immortal because he negates the concept of life. Yeah. She can create barriers because she can negate the concept of things changing. Yeah, I guess the power system is un. So yeah. He's undead, unluck, unchanged. One's like unmoving. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, a lot of them are starting to just be, I stop you or something. Yeah. Unchange is I stop something. And there is one who stops them moving. You well, know, so the blue hair guy apparently has like a reverse thing. It was like, I undo like whatever you're trying to do. I force you to do the opposite. Yeah. So if you try to go up, you you go down. Yeah. So yeah. it's just like kind of just like turning, like inverting your controller. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So that like, it's kind of a cool thing. Like I kind of like how, cause JJK had a big week of being like, this is how it works. We're going to give you the thesis level breakdown on how this works. Right. And I was like watching undead unluck. And I was like, this is a good mix of like fucking Whatever, Whatever, and also, like, <laughs> this is how it works. Yeah, no, that's fair. Uh, Shangri-La? Shangri-La. What'd you think? So, I, listen, I'm kind of, I don't have a lot of notes on it, because this episode felt like every other episode to me. So, you coming in and being like, wow, big episode, lot changed, kind of threw me off. It, well, so, I have some notes. Uh -huh. uh, one is that, so, in it, there's a bit where, like, this girl took a screenshot of uh, the main guy yes. and the little Vorpal bunny. Mm -hmm. And she like asked the forums, like, how do we get this bunny? And yeah. that like put out a hit on him, essentially. Yeah. Um, I have, and it was like a montage of like different users and their usernames, like writing in the forums. Can I put something in before you finish your point? Yeah. I said one of my only notes. Yeah. Love the forum bit. The comments were wildly accurate. Yeah. Did you like I like paused to read the yeah, comments yeah. and people were like, oh God, here comes the furries. And I was like, yeah. holy fuck, they did they said the thing. Did you read any usernames? No. One of them was Thundernut. And that's, I really liked it. That's great. I just have a note that says Thundernut. Nice. Uh, <laughs> I like that you have one set of notes and it's just fucking thunder. You have <laughs> 12 words there, and one of them is fucking Thundernut. One third of my notes is Thundernut. Wild. Um, another one of my notes is John Wick. Because this, do you ever watch John Wick 2? First off, I've seen every John Wick. Okay. Borderline a religion to me. This ends like John Wick 2, where it's like- I guess, The yeah. whole world is putting hits out on him. Yeah. 
And my third- But this one actually makes sense. Like, yeah. John Wick is like, oh, uh, the baby's an assassin. And you're like, fucking how? There are more assassins than there are people who could be killed That's in my John thing. Wick. It's gotta be freelancing, right? Yeah. It's gotta be like, I pick up assassin work after my construction job to yeah. like pay the bills. For, there's not enough people to die. That's the thing. Yeah. That's, I was like, how often are people being killed? Yeah. Because like in the real world, there's like three assassins. Yeah. There's like, it's like every, like the mafia, the Mexican mafia has like four they send a guy, yeah. uh, uh, like, I don't know, the Swedish house mafia has one, and I, that's it. Everyone's like, got a guy, and then they probably, like, whoever needs an assassin is probably like, hey, um, my Mexican cartel friend, do you know a guy? And they'll be like, yeah, I'll hook you up with him. Exactly. And then now the Mexican cartel guy is also the Swedish hitman. Ha Swedish house mafia. House mafia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know these You <laughs> don't know that mafia? No. The Swedish house mafia? No, I've that's never crazy. heard of that one. That's crazy. Um, I thought Switzerland was nice and friendly. No, 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 no. It's just like, they got they got a bad streak. They got shit? Yeah, they got a bad streak. Um, yeah. And then my third note, so that, that was exciting. The John Wick aspect of it, where it ends and it's like, He's being hunted. He's got people who want to come and protect him. Yeah. And I hope, because my biggest qualm, if mm -hmm. you will. Great word. With, thank you. With these like video game anime is I hope that like the people who are like, we're going to come protect him are doing. And the people who are like, we're going to come hunt him. Mm -hmm. I hope they're all doing it out of a sense of like video game loving fun. Because my qualm. Okay. Is everyone takes shit so seriously. I. You Listen, know? I'm gonna I'm gonna hit you with the hardest counterpoint of all time yeah. here. You just don't take video games that seriously. What are you there is okay. About? Listen, did you remember the story a couple? It was a couple of months ago that came out where this one guy got into a like it's like a it's like a WoW playthrough where if their characters die, the character's gone forever. Mm -hmm. So these WoW players, there's like a hundred or so of them, they're doing like this incredibly hard dungeon, and this guy decides to throw the entire dungeon and get 100 of these like characters. Are you talking about Leroy Jenkins? No, it's oh. kind of like a Leroy no. thing, but Leroy, they all can wake up. They click respond and they're yeah. happy. These people spend years on one character. And yeah. when that one character dies, it's deleted, hard gone right. forever. So years of work into one character on World of Warcraft. This guy, because I think somebody took his loot or something, decides to embed himself in that same group, wait until they're going to the hardest raid. And then like also works his way up like the hierarchical yeah. ladder. So they trust him to like do this like scream that pulls like, a, like important enemies to right. him. So everybody else can survive. So what he does, says fuck all that just like starts like pulling enemies towards the healers and all that uh, destroys the entire raid hundreds of people lose years of work wow all because somebody took this guy's loot like right. you're just like the thing is you're just not serious about it that like, was gripping also you ever heard of eve online <laughs> yeah the play like where you have like the half a million dollar ships well that's but that's like the financial cost Incredible. Like, but, but, but it's imagine like, imagine you wake up and your yeah. quarter million dollar ship is gone I'm not going to work today. Well, like, I get that. Like, again, because you've sunk, like, $500,000 into a ship. Yeah. But with this, it's like, this dude paid 60 bucks to play a game, yeah. and he's in the game. Like, I hope these fucking, like, other players who are hunting him, I hope at the end of the day, it, they're just doing it because it's fun to do PvP content. I get you okay. know, like... But here's the thing. All right. We're, we're talking for this perspective of i'm sitting down at this desk there's a monitor i'm playing right, on my keyboard right. imagine you were moving your body in a virtual well, world it's like, right but you're doing like role play which yeah. i also get but it's like anyone who, I, I it's just i get cringy when they I don't what you don't get the role play I'll occasionally get these like gta role play lives and i'm like this is fucking gross because like, <laughs> like, it's like, like half of the time it's like oh we're playing as cops yeah and they're like trying to catch all these burglars and like get on the ground and if somebody told me what to do in a video game I simply wouldn't. Like, they'd be like, oh, you're going to jail. It's like when you uh, log on to, what's that? What's that fucking dinosaur hunting game? Um, Monster Hunter? No, no. The one where it's like, not Arma. Um, oh, Ark? Ark. But it's like the second you log into Ark, people will like capture you and strip you and make you a slave. <laughs> Holy shit. I would just log out. Like, just fucking log. It's like, oh no, you got, fuck you. Go to a different server. I would just go have sex with a woman. Like, like <laughs> oh, hey babe. Um, You know what? Never mind. I don't have things to do tonight. Like, let's go get dinner. Like, what? I, well, here's the thing. Did you ever play with stuffed animals as a child? I, probably. Did you ever play? Okay, probably isn't good enough for me. I mean, like, I, like, I don't know. Like, well, I, you, so, know what I, you know what I did have? What'd you do? Remember you used to have those, you could buy dinosaur eggs and yeah. you crack them, there'd be little dinosaurs inside? That's what I had. That's you sick. Did you play with friends with toys? 
Like like action figures, stuffed animals with other people. I don't think so. There it is. I don't. So that's the thing I used to. Like I used to play with stuffed animals, like Pokemon stuffed animals and stuff with my friend. And we like that kind of play is only fun if both players are taking it seriously. Yeah. Like if I have a lightsaber and you have a lightsaber and we're playing, obviously neither of us want to get hurt actually, mm. but we're developing a story in our head and if we're fighting each other and I'm like, and then I shoot lightning at you and you're like, nope, I block it. That's not fun. Yeah, you're like, like fucking how? Yeah, like you got to take some hits every now and then mm -hmm. and I got to take some hits every now and then. So, yeah, that's fair. Arc, it's mutually assured destruction of mm. fun. So in Arc, if I spawn in and someone captures me and makes me a slave and instead of figuring out how I can like charisma or like sneak or barter my way out of it. Mm. And instead I just log out. Then when I find a new player and want to make him a slave, it's not going to be fun. Cause he will just log out. You know, if everyone is agreeing to role play, what? Uh, fucking don't make someone a slave. Don't make someone a slave. It's the easiest layup it's of all fun. time. What are you talking about? Oh yeah. It's virtual. We'll figure but, it out. But it's like, if I, uh, if everyone is taking it seriously, uh -huh. you get to do the shit that you want to do. If you suffer through some, like if you're playing GTA and you want to like do crime shit, mm -hmm. you can just do that in the campaign. Like it's only fun with the risk of consequences of cop players catching you and you doing what they say. So very ironically, yeah. good night world. The other video game uh -huh. anime that came out does like talks about this bit in a really interesting and compelling way because we're both like you and me exist on the different two sides of the argument. So the thing is, it's this huge virtual world. It's like, it's kind of like, uh, what is, what's it? Uh, Shangri-La frontier. Okay. Uh, and there is a guild in this huge virtual world, 3000 people that are pirates. Yeah. And all they do is like real life pirate activities in the world. Right. And everyone hates them because, <laughs> because they're like, they're real life pirates. It's like people yeah. are like getting on this game to try and enjoy it. And they're like, Oh, we need the pirate guild because we get on and it's like, I'm a, I'm a second grade teacher and my work is so hard. So like I, the only reason that like I can be as good a teacher as I am is because I can blow off steam here as a pirate in this virtual world. Yeah. And I'm like, but then everybody online and on forums hates the guild leader who like created this entire pirate guild to try and get one of the main characters to join her. But everybody hates her. Like she's like the most beguiled person in the entire world because they're like, we're trying to enjoy this. You're fucking it up just because like you're trying to blow off steam here. So like, I think it's kind of an interesting like, Oh, you want to role play as the bad guy? You want to role play as like the slave yeah. owner and all that? You want to like? I was like, but you're fucking up somebody else's experience. Yeah, there needs to be like balance to yeah. it. Like, it it needs to be consensual role play, yeah. right? So like, mm, a little consensual, yeah, consensual, a little, needs little, to be a little consensual. Little, role oh, you're play. asleep on the couch. Yeah, oh, good thing little... you're a deep sleeper. <laughs> Sorry. Was that a peak? Was that a peak too much? Too too, too far into next life? About? I don't know. I can, don't worry about it. What do you think consent is? Listen, it's consensual, non-consensual, uh, bud. Yeah, it's a whole genre. Um. So I don't believe me. I know. Listen, uh, you get four years into a relationship, you gotta, you gotta yeah. spice it up. Um. But we uh we. Yeah, you and me, buddy. <laughs> little ropes, little chains that hurt nobody. I don't even know what I was gonna say. Probably something about weep. arc. Um. Oh, it needs to be consensual where like if you want to do the role play stuff like right there are pirate games in real life yeah. Sea of Thieves. That is fun if you get four friends and all role play as pirates, you yeah. know, like if the fucking ship is sinking, you have stations and those people at their stations have to unsink the ship. I love having the one friend who's bad. First off, love Sea of Thieves. Yeah, do love you? having the one friend who's just bad at video games and you make him the bilge rat. And it's like, you get the bucket. We ever get water. You, you get that. You get the fuck off the ship. That's what I'm saying is like, that's fun. Yeah. If that dude plays along, but if like you can have players coming in and just like, wrecking your shit mm -hmm. that's not fun because you didn't agree to like do that kind of situation i guess yeah like like if in gta you're playing the campaign mm -hmm. offline if other players could just invade and like fuck up your shit that's not fun because you're playing the campaign to play it alone so what about like elden ring like from soft like invasions how do you feel about that 
Because that is like, it's oh, like, cool, I'm on my way to the boss. Jesus, fucking get out of the way. Get out of the way. Like, yeah. fucking Radagon is right there. Move. It's like infrequent enough. You can also turn it off, is the can thing. Can you? Yeah, let's just not play, play offline mode. Oh, that's incredibly fair. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, that's like, that's one of those things where people the like option. the masochism. That's you need what it the is. option. The option is important. Yeah, exactly. Like Red Dead Online, you could turn off PvP stuff. Like, yeah. people can't shoot you. Yeah. essentially Even if you don't want them to so yeah. that's the thing so with shangri-la frontier it's like okay i could understand buying into a fully immersive vr situation because yeah. you're like fucking my hands are moving i'm in a fantasy world right. like it was like the only like if i could jump into a vr world and somehow sustain like my physical body that it would survive i'd live there yeah for oh, sure. i would live there for sure a hundred percent if it existed people's sole motivation in life would be to get a nest egg of money large enough that you could just have like an iv tapped into you like you're an sao because i think sao they spend two and a half years in the game yeah. but like everybody collapses at some point so they have to move them all to the hospital and like get like like IVs, you remember you've yeah. seen the first season um, was it you who's telling me like because i was blown away that they'd all be able to survive mm -hmm. were you the one who was like yeah that's the like japanese healthcare baby oh that they would like take yeah. everybody in yeah, yeah japanese healthcare yeah, is yeah. yeah that's like so funny to me yeah just like they would just be like i mean there's only what ten thousand of them and that's of only the, but that's the people who survive like, yeah, that's right, like right. ten thousand to begin yeah, yeah i think it ends with something like 2,000 survive. Yeah. So, you know, you only have to worry about X amount of people. Right. Yeah. 2,000. But, but also at that yeah. point, I think the company would pay. You're right. Like, hey, yeah. you built a company of like murderous, like <laughs> microwaving brain machines. Yeah. Like, yeah, you're going to fit the medical bills. Yeah, exactly. But, um, Shangri-La Frontier. I had one last note. Okay. Um, oh, I wrote this girl's really be really about to be bullied out of this game for taking a screenshot. Oh, yeah. Did you read some of the ones were that like, are did like... Did you get his consent to yeah, take that screenshot? Did you ask to take that? Like, fucking what, when, guys? When have we ever done this? <laughs> what are yeah. you talking about? It's like, oh, She's I actually... not docs. Yeah, they're like... They even got his username and face. And it's like... What fucking... It's not doxing him. It's, yeah, it's not hit... Like, he's he's wearing a bird mask. Yeah, yeah what? It's like, yeah, it's also like the public's... Per, like, like reception of him as a character is very funny to me. Everyone's like, why is he running around half naked? Like, the guards yeah. being like, you can't come in like this is very funny. If there was AI like that, that would be insane. But I do love, like, the usage of the forum. Like, I think Shangri-La Frontier is the most understanding of the video game community sure. I've ever seen from an anime. Other than that weird screenshot bit, for sure. I it's, feel like people who would like actually, I feel like a couple people would get upset about that. I'd beat them up. Oh yeah, for sure. I have a ton, look, I'm so accepting of like 98% of things mm -hmm. that like, that's such a little pussy bitch thing <laughs> to be upset about. Like, oh, you took a picture of his character. Like, he took a what? screenshot in a video game. What are you doing? Yeah, he had a super rare item. I want to know where to fucking get it. Yeah, like, oh, what like, do you want from me? What? Hey, dude? can I do this? What? Was that a nod? <laughs> yeah, like fucking no. Yeah, it's it's so funny to me too that like players are like, like you mentioned people thinking it's weird that he's walking around with like no armor. Mm -hmm whatever happens all the time it's a game yeah let people me walk her. around with literal. yeah let me solo her like yeah. and no one i guarantee like no one bats an eye when that dude shows up in their game mm -hmm. yeah absolutely insane but yeah so so good i'm excited for the john wick-esque like the, the last few episodes felt like they were like meandering mm -hmm. this is like an explosion of the world. Like yeah. shit's coming. Oh, my other note that mm. I thought in my head. One of your three notes. Uh, my secret bonus hidden note. Love those. When the rabbit started turning into a woman, I was like, oh no, oh no, oh no. Jesus, stop. Yep. So what's really funny is my literal note was, of course the bunny is a bunny girl. Of course. Um, so what's cool though, what's funny is that the main character has the same reaction as all of us yeah. where it's like the bunny starts turning into a bunny girl and he's like, Oh my God, she's going to be fucking anthro. And he yeah. was like, this is like, this it's is going to be you a would, harem. Yeah. He's like, this is what you would do in a trash yeah. game. You would build an anthro, like, yeah. like, like monster girl. Harem. Was that an SAO jab? No. Cause I say it was like a harem anime. It's harem adjacent. Yeah. He has three love and four. If you count his cousin, that's so har romantic. That's listen. It's not even that bad. Listen, oh yeah. Asta. Asta from Black Clover has Noel, Mimosa, the bartender, and I, 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 ah, there might be, there might be like, uh, Sally. I'd say Sally's like a possible fourth option. Those but are just the women. Those are, that's not even including the steel guy. The steel guy might have a crush on him. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know, does not have a, 
What about the kid of Fuego Leon's uh, oh, little Fuego brother? Oh, Fuego Leon's little brother? Yeah, definite chance. that dude? Definite chance that he has a crush, yeah. So I, I feel like, I'd see like three and up is a harem. Yeah. Below that is just, that's just that the power of two women. Because here's the thing, Naruto. <laughs> Below three is just two women. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, Below, that's listen, not a harem. That's just like two love interests is just a choice. Yeah, yeah. That's not a harem. Yeah. You're like, oh, unless one of them sticks around. Mm. Uh, but what was I saying? Oh, yes. So Shangri-La, really funny how they address like, oh, she can turn into a human. And he was like, this is not, they're like, she, she can only do this for five minutes. So it's yeah. like, don't worry. This for will, now, she yeah. says. Yeah, so it's like, oh, this will not be the standard. Yeah, yeah so that was funny. I loved that. Okay, we'll get to the main event here. Want to talk about JJK? Yeah. You came in hot on this episode. That was good. You loved it. That was great. I love, I just like like hearing your initial reaction because I want to like, I don't want to mire your reaction yeah. by giving you mine. So I want to hear, how'd you feel? Dude, this is going to be the only anime Blu-ray I ever buy because <clears> I got to <throat> see this season in fucking just full brightness, please. That Okay, so no ghosting this episode. Yeah whole lot of darkening just dark as hell yeah um which i mind way less than ghosting i also mind that way less than ghosting because i can watch my it hero like, got me used to it i was like oh that's it's dark but like i see what's happening yeah i see it yeah i genuinely wonder if they're doing it more because of the chainsaw sell blu-ray because it's selling me oh, i'm yeah. gonna get the blu-ray you have to i have to i gotta see these fights like I, normal i could see that being like a like a galaxy brain move it's like listen you didn't like that. Yeah. There's a way for you to avoid it. No, yeah. I a hundred percent think that, um, this episode was so sick. It's all just, you love fights. Toji. I love Toji. You just love Toji. He's so hot. He's <laughs> so cool. Yeah. He's just wearing a sweater. Yeah. Like he's so cool. He looking. is like, he, he's so comfy. He's so cool looking and the sweater's so loose. Mm -hmm. Like it's animated. So sick. Yeah. It like keeps like coming off him. You like see his like shirt hole, get like loose, something like that. It's yeah. so cool. So Toji shows up. What a just great idea. Mm -hmm. Maybe kills like three whole ass people. Who three uh, whole people Four maybe the fucking Nanami. It burns a bunch of people. Well, that's not, that's no, not no, Toji. No, 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 that's, that's Jogo. Yeah, that's Jogo. Never mind. Mm. Reeling it back. Yep, there we go. Yep, I didn't even, we'll oh, cut it. We'll oh. cut the whole thing. Oh, she's a big one. She's a big one. Old coming Snap from the line. Yep. Um, fuck. Fuck, fuck. Fuck my whole youth pastor group. Can I eat here? <laughs> yeah, 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 you can. Um, but for audio only listeners, I was reeling a big fish. Snap the line. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, so he comes in, beats the shit out of Dagon or Dagon. Yeah, whatever. Um, sharpens that girl's playful big, cloud yeah playful cloud sharpens it just by like like three or four passes what a cool upgrade to that mm -hmm. weapon yep what, what like fucking what try chuck yep what is that weapon I, called i don't even know what it is just it, a staff it with shows chains. up in anime a lot though and i'm like i don't it doesn't seem practical i know i don't like it at all yeah but, um yeah beats the ever-living shit out of dagon and then the 24 frames a second dude mm -hmm. like helps him get the final blow which is cool yeah it's a callback to last episode where dagon like goes to like float and now Bito, or now i think it's now Bito, like literally he's like the air is my domain just yeah. pushes him back down <laughs> yeah. and then toji just fucking pierces him through yeah. the skull that all was very cool i liked watching dagon fight and yeah. be like you know fish fish domain mm -hmm. that was all cool it's just a lot of fighting. So do we want to talk? Do you have anything to say about Toji before we get into go? Yeah, go, um, go? so absolutely. So I said Toji is a menace. So yeah. unnecessary to explain uh, why he's still alive through the seance. In the beginning, when they're like, the, like Toji is still around because like when the grandma died, her seance wasn't dismissed. I know, like I got it immediately. Yeah. Like relax. And then they were like, and usually the way the seance thing works is that when the like when the man using the seance runs out of cursed energy, the person like fades away. But because yeah. Toji doesn't have cursed energy, he's never gonna fade away. It's so stupid. And you're like, I okay, like it's it's the perfect Gekka Katami moment where you're like, no one was asking. You're I like, know. You're like, okay, we like maybe somebody was gonna be like, the grandma died. How is he still around? And like, I think it genuinely is him being raised in the modern era of anime and manga, yeah. and people looking at things like Naruto and being like, kind of a plot hole. It's your fault. It is like <laughs> yeah, it's you. It's me. Like you genuinely, asshole. I am the problem. It's you and totally not Mark. It is because later. Okay. Um. Yeah. Well, we'll get to it. Uh. So it is people like me, like hyper fixating on a singular anime and being like this was never explained this was never explained and this was never explained yeah. 
And then so it's like, Gage is like, you won't catch me with my pants down ever. Yeah. Like, I'm going to explain the it's, shit out of everything. It's you posting a 40 minute long video being like, you never see Sakura read. She can't read. I, I mean, prove me wrong. Yeah. When does she, all you ever see Sakura do with a scroll. Shit. What was that? Sorry, someone just threw a dog at the door. What happened? <laughs> oh, it was one of, one of our dogs probably yeah. scratching at the door. Yeah. Uh, the only time you ever see Sakura use a scroll is when there's a fish on it. So I hate probably that trying to you cope know. I can't believe you know. I, I just pulled a random character and a random activity reading, and you were like, psych, Sakura's red. You psycho. I genuinely- You need therapy. The only other time <laughs> <laughs> you need therapy. Very so fair. Bad. The only other possible time that Sakura would have read a scroll is during the tuning exams in the Forest of Death. Yeah, I, I don't know if that. she read the sun or the moon scroll. Same. I don't like me either. I don't. It's my job. It's my job. I don't know. I don't, I don't know why I'm like this. Do you ever get people asking if Neji is blind? Why would Neji be blind? I remember that used to be a uh, like an urban legend that Neji and Hinata were blind. Why were they? Because they're cause because they're, their, eyes. their eyes are yeah, gray. They have no pupils. It's like literally the entire thing of the Byakugan is see real good, see so good. <laughs> that was just the thing. I wonder if it made it to your circle. No. Um, but. Yeah, that was way too much explanation. Yeah. Here's the thing about the explanation, too. He's like, normally this technique works like this. Did we ever see that grandma use that? So, nope. like, who would be like, she's who also would know? fucking dead. Like, she's, she's gone. Dead. Yep. Like, those, it's so weird. Like, no one would have been like, how is it still happening? She's dead. Because he never said it stops when she dies. Yeah, exactly. You know, we would just assume. If she raises someone and then dies, they stay up. You know what I think it might be, actually? This is a this is a deep theory here. There's a possibility that Gage Gatami, he's released weekly ever since JJK came out. Like, he barely ever takes breaks. Now, like, where we're at in the manga, like, occasionally it'll be, like, a two-week break. It'll be like, all right, like, I'll post the next chapter the week after next. I think he might just be filling pages. Like, I think, like, if I'm him, think about it. If I'm him... I can just like focus. I can just draw Toji a couple of times yeah. and then just do big letter explanations around him. The way you describe the manga mm. makes it sound like it's a light novel. Like, is it like two pictures and then a paragraph on the bottom half of the page? Every other chapter of JJK. So it's like incre like best fight you've ever seen. And then the next chapter cuts to a couple of characters and they're just explaining what's happening. Right. So it's like every other chapter is just like exposition. Yeah. And you're like, I'm pretty sure because like half of the time it's just like gray square. And yeah. then it's like a, like a bunch of like letters. And I'm like, we're just filling out pages here. Yeah. But at the same time, like, do you? Like, that's the reason JJK has next to no plot holes. And so it's like, I, I kind of appreciate it. As the asshole who's probably the reason yeah. this shit is happening. I kind of appreciate it. I hope you're happy with yourself. I am a little bit happy with myself. I like it because it gives my brain a chance to be like, oh, this narrator's talking. Oh, you just shut off. I just don't even look. Are you kidding me? I feel like you just understand that I'll tell you. Yeah. Uh, there's, no, that. there's no reason for you to know because at some point I will scream the information <laughs> at you, you from six feet away. <laughs> yeah. Um, you always like you do the like Henry Cavill, like reload your biceps right before it happens. I yeah. love it. You do one of those and then you're like. Well, I live for this shit. I know you do. I you love, literally live for this shit. It's your uh, job. It is my full job. So anyways, uh, and then I said the choreography. Yep. Great. Is did such a good job at showing why he's terrifying. Like it was like him smiling through everything and then just like appearing in front of Dagon. Like he, he's done that a couple of times where he just is there. Yeah. And it's like, so he's literally like a slasher. Like yeah. he's a horror film, like slasher because he'll show up. He'll beat the ever living piss out of you. And there's nothing you can do about it. And you'll underestimate him the entire time. Yeah. Him rolling across Dagon's back and then like getting playful cloud around his neck and then using playful cloud as like a, like a Spider-Man pull in yeah. the Dagon space with like both his feet. Awesome. Speed is so sick. Always. Yeah. Anyone who's fast is always so cool. Mm -hmm. Um, also it, him they didn't really focus on it all that much but him entering the water because he doesn't have cursed energy he can't stand on water uh, so, so he's, he's walking on he the has bottom. no chakra yeah so he's walking on the bottom of yeah. the ocean and then he begins to run so fast he can walk on water like everybody else he's such a rock lee yeah. he is such a fucking like i don't have cursed energy ho wink he does Rockley does have Rockley. I i explained this to you i know last you do week, i Daniel. know but everyone's like Rockley doesn't have chakra this is that I'm just saying, it's like them being what? I just, we cannot disseminate this lie. It's just them being like, this character doesn't have magic mm. as he literally flies in the air. As Austin is like, it's, yeah, but my sword, I can hold yeah. on to my sword and I can direct where my sword goes. Fucking Toji 
literally flies mm. this whole episode yeah. just flying. He like puts his staff together and he uses it to boost himself up to Dagon. What we do need to talk about though, okay. Asta does have magic. We've straight, talked about straight this. up. Austin does have magic. Yeah, like everything new? about him, magic. Is that new? Did a new chapter come out? No, or a new oh, chapter just... comes out in December. It's the first gotcha. chapter we've gotten since it went quarterly. That's actually news from this week. Gotcha. Um, I do. Yeah, we can talk about Jogo. Um, um wait, real quick. Yeah. With him flying, that mm-hmm. was my other beef with JJK season one. Okay. Is that Yuji before even getting Sekuna yeah. or Sukuna? Just flies. Superhuman. Just flying and shit. He's superhumanly strong. Yeah. I'm not going to explain to you why. Whatever. I know he's got like demon blood or I know his father's crazy. Whatever. Sort of. I don't care because I was like, that was my old crusade as I was like, Yuji's a Mary Sue. He like just gets shit handed to him. He's naturally good at everything. This and that. Whatever. I get that bad stuff's about to happen to him. My whole thing was he was Mary Sue, because episode one, he's literally flying in the sky, beating up this huge demon, and he's just like, I'm just naturally good at shot put. Of course I could beat this thing up. And then everyone's like, he's not a Mary Sue. He's got God blood or whatever. It's like, hey, what is being a Mary Sue if not literally being born with cool dude juice? (sighs) I, what? I'm going to disavow entirely on this. I uh, listen, I just not listen. Just because we share a podcast does not mean we share a take. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get ahead of that, ladies mm-hmm. and gentlemen. Um, Okay. Fair. He is born powerful. Yeah. But boy, oh boy, does that boy have to work for most of the shit he gets. Yeah. As of like soon. As of uh, already. As of soon. He's already died, Daniel. Yeah. He keeps dying and coming back. Once, what's more, what's more fucking lucky than that? He pretty much just died again recently. Then Sukunu brings him back. Sukunu? Sukunu? <laughs> Sukudu. What's My his name? favorite canoe, the yeah. Sukunu. <laughs> what's his name? Sukuna? Sukuna, yeah. yeah. No, I. I Sukudu Zabubi. That's fucking. No wonder everyone's afraid of him with a name <laughs> like that. Oh. Sukuna does bring him back to life here. He does. Yeah. You're absolutely right. He would have died without after Chozo's yeah. battle, but he also objectively loses against Chozo. Uh huh. Like, he goes through so much. Yeah, but... He's not even the most powerful person in his universe until maybe right now in the manga. 241 chapters into the manga, it took him to become the strongest person in the universe. But it's like we talked about before, he, like, only wins because of Sukuna or, like, bullshit. Like, he only... How does Naruto win the majority of his fights in the early days of Naruto? Um... Oh, uh, angry, now orange... Fox time. Uh, he farts in Kiba's face. That's that's genuinely ingenuity. Fair. Mm-hmm. That's ingenuity and cleverness. Mm-hmm. He outwits Neji. That's genu- with the uppercut. Like it, why did Neji run out of chakra so fast? I just it, I, everyone's like, oh, he, his Bianca gun wasn't activated. Yeah, he's a childhood genius. It's a five minute battle. How did he run out of chakra already? Doesn't he trick him with Shikamaru's uh, hole? I didn't think it was a chakra thing. Yeah, well, no, it's like so he goes underground. Yeah. And then he hits him with an uppercut. Which well, Shikamaru's he sends hole. a clone underground. Yeah. With Shikamaru's hole. Which Neji should be able to see because he can uh, see 360 degrees. Not underground. Absolutely underground. He could see underground. 100% one on, yeah, uh, 360 degrees. What does that mean to you? But not like I can see 180 degrees, let's say. Yeah. Almost. But if there's a wall in front of one of my eyes, I can't see beyond that wall. Yeah. He can see through things. That's like well, that's what I'm asking. That's but like the, the biggest ability of the Byakugan. You see through shit. Well, all right then. Yeah, fair. But yeah. that's Naruto using clever thinking and ingenuity to win. Okay. So how is how is Yuji not using clever thinking or ingenuity? When has he? Uh, the battle against the two Death Womb paintings. He has to rely on Nobura's abilities to use her curse technique. So he's like carrying her away from the battle. Oh, that happens. Um, there is the entire finger bearer fight. Um, there is his battle with Toto where he has to like trust Toto to teleport him to the right spots in the battle against Hanami. That's Toto just like doing shit for it's him. Absolutely. Listen, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna sit here and say that Toto's a hard carry in that battle. But there's no like, there's no Naruto beating Neji moment. You know, that's what I was talking about with the like bathroom fight the other day where mm. I was like, 
I hate that Yuji wasn't the one to figure out Waters' weakness. I know, home and security. This is all he has, That's Daniel. That's what I'm saying. That's why I don't like him. His only ability is fists. I want him to figure something out. Still, in the manga, only ability, fists. But anyway. That's, he's a simple character in a complex world. That's the interesting thing about him. Oh, oh, Gojo's got infinity. He can control blue and red and purple. And But he even has- Luffy figures shit out on his own. Luffy is a Mary Sue. Oh, I, I don't even, I could explain. But he's clever. I could explain but it to you clever. right now. It's not Luffy bullshit. is a Mary Sue. Oh he works for a lot of the things that he has, but it has most recently been revealed in both the anime and the manga that there's a reason that Luffy is as powerful as he is. And boy, oh boy, does it have to do with his fucking birth? Is it the sun god shit it's, or whatever? It's the joy boy stuff. Yeah. I bet. Um, Which by the way, I, I know about everyone was like, oh, oh, Luffy, Luffy drinks milk and he can fix his bones like Brooke and Brooke can just do it because he's a fucking skeleton. And everyone was like, oh, it gets explained later in the manga. That's and I'm like, I know, I know he's Joy Boy. Big milk propaganda. It's literally the biggest milk propaganda. Yeah. Like, it's like, they're like, oh, time to drink some milk. He grows back teeth and bones. And everyone's like, who's paying you? What, what the milk? Fuck? Why did milk have such a stranglehold on it us sure as children? It sure does. It has a huge stranglehold on a Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. I can mm-hmm. tell you that. Yeah. It had another one on another one. Simply just got to be dairy subsidiaries, right? It must like be. that's it's just like, got, yeah. That's the whole thing. Um. Hey everybody! Quick spoiler warning for the next episode of JJK. Thanks for watching. But enough of that, because we have more JJK to talk about we with do. Jogo wiping people out. Yeah, maybe killing three major characters with two major characters. Maki. Two minor characters. A minor? Maki's okay. Maki is not Maki, a... Mo- Maki's the less cool Rock Lee of this. She becomes more important down the line. Oh, doesn't kill her then. Oh. Nice going, Captain <laughs> Doofus. You're so bad at your job. <laughs> Or you're too we good get, at it. Can we get Nick spoils music? Like, <laughs> I just like I want like I want I want really like it's I'm just gonna like slow a, down frog type being. It's gonna be or you know when uh when you get a headshot in Halo when you have like the 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 skull on that goes yeah. like a yay yeah. that's what I want it's <laughs> like, a, like a, a confetti burst of like every time Nick spoils yeah. something. Wow, all my speculation of this episode is. A waste of time. I will not comment on the other two people who got flamed. Stank, make sure to put a spoiler tag. Mm -hmm. Just put visually, and if you can, auditorily. If you're okay with recording your voice, just put a like, hey, Nick's about to spoil something in the next 15 seconds. Also, don't use copyrighted music this time, you dingus. Does that happen? Absolutely. He was like, he like frantically texted me at 9 a.m. He's like, I fucking use copyright music. The podcast isn't going up. And I was like, God damn it. What are you doing? I know. What a loser. (laughs) What an idiot our editor is. What an amateur. I know. So. So whatever. Joe goes just flaming people left and right. Like he's you yelling at the MK fandom. That's me. Um. So that was cool. I like that Jogo is low-key, unbelievably powerful, despite looking so stupid. Never went... Despite looking like an Italian dessert. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. I got so close to spoiling something again. What, is he about to look cooler? Nope. Not as... We're not even going to talk about it, actually. Okay. But Jogo is, like, full-on, out of that entire group, out of Hanami, out of Dagon, out of, you know, like, outside of Kenjaku. What's that guy's name who warps people? The stitched up guy. The sti- oh, Mahito. Mahito. Mahito is probably the strongest out of all That's of those cursed spirits. Jogo's second. Yeah. And so like Jogo, everyone's like, oh, Jogo's fodder. Jogo's a fraud. All this because the first person he battles is the strongest person in the universe. Yeah. Like obviously he gets decapitated by Gojo. Like yeah. it's like you get embarrassed, but like, that's because you, you battled. Embarrassed. Yeah, it was like like you tried to open yeah. your domain against the number one yeah. domain. It's dude. embarrassing. It's like trying to drive in the post against LeBron. Like it's yeah. just not going to happen. So. He gets embarrassed there, and like he's just like Jogo has incredibly bad luck of just like every person that we ever see him fight is just the strongest motherfucker. Uh, but like, yeah, like way stronger than your average grade one sorcerer. So, how do you feel about him nuking Nabito, Nanami, Maki? Sweet. Like I said, I always knew he was like crazy powerful. Yeah. It's just like Gojo's stronger. Yeah. Um, so I thought it was cool. I've always loved Jogo being really strong. Mm-hmm. I love that he like creates little volcanoes to like flamethrower them. Yeah. I'm upset that uh she's not dead. Maki? You're yeah. upset that Maki isn't dead? Um, Incredibly dope character Maki. Yeah, but I like when I hate death baiting. Like if you're gonna kill a character, so that's you like, exciting. You like a good death? 
I like a good death. Oh, you got a couple of episodes. Oh, you know, yeah. You're going you're gonna to be a big every JGK week, fan. Every week, you go next episode to the crazy That's episode. That's because I in, I have forgotten so much about the Shibuya incident. <laughs> completely forgot. Like, I was like, oh, it's like this rap against Dagon is going to get like, this fight against Dagon is going to get completely wrapped up. And then I completely forgot that the Jogo Sukuna fight was on the way. Like, mm. I forgot that fight even existed. Like, I know what happens. I just don't remember when in the sequence of the Shibuya incident that happens. Because the Shibuya incident is a bunch of different characters in different parts of Shibuya all fighting for their lives. Yeah. So, like, I'm just like, oh, something's gonna happen. And then, like, it's, I'm not only the, I'm not even the only person because a lot of people on TikTok were like, oh, next episode's gonna be crazy. And then people in the comments are like, no, it's not. And yeah. we're like, oh, fuck, okay. They're all crazy. Like, yeah. this is all God tier episode action but like it's all fights deaths start happening at a certain point and that's when the shibuya gets incidented and everyone's like oh you're gonna learn about the real shibuya incident yeah. next episode and everyone's like dagon's gonna die but that yeah. means nothing i know it's drag it's not dragging i'm not bored but yeah. i'm like again every week you keep telling give me, me them deaths um but next episode is gonna toji the- fights fushigiro which yes. is cool or not? Yes. Who knows? I I fucking yes. hate this podcast. What do you mean? <laughs> you you say something to me. The the way a podcast works is I respond. Here's what I want to ask, mm-hmm. and I've made sure not to allow any spoilers. Mm. Do you know what Sukuna's power is? Yes. Okay. That's, That's the not end. A spoiler. Of, it what's He's his power? It. What's his power? Cube? Sort of. Yeah. He yeah, just I mean, slices things. You're heading in the right direction. Yeah. I mean, he literally just sliced a bunch of people. Did you know who those two people were? No, I have no idea. Full on Ghetto's daughters. So oh. remember how Ghetto went to that village uh, and they locked yeah. away the two girls and then they were like, oh, that's the reason that like people are dying. But in actuality, it was a cursed spirit and they could just see him. So Ghetto adopts those two girls and like those two girls grow up with Ghetto. And like, so like when he's off doing his like evil Ghetto thing, like yeah. building a giant religion, like trying to do the the Christmas, like yeah, yeah. I, I think it's the, I think it's called like the Christmas event or something like that. Those girls live with him the entire time. So like those girls are like kind of his daughters. Right. Was that in the last season? It's more, well, it's like, Kind of. So it's more about like hidden inventory, right? So we get introduced to those two characters right after Ghetto, like right after Rico dies. Uh, And then like he goes to that village and the first bad thing he does is like he kills 112 people in that village. At that point, he adopts those two girls. And then in the last season, like right before Gojo, or I guess it's more, no, it's chapter zero. The chapter zero movie before Gojo like finishes him off, like the girls that he's flying around with when he's like, oh, I'm going to get you, Yuta. Those girls are the girls that he adopts right. after he kills all those people. Got you. Yeah. Weird. So that's why they want get. That's why they want Kenjaku dead because they want to like let Ghetto's body what? rest. Why would they not put any of that in the show? What do you mean? That's like, I feel like it's unreasonable for me to, have, to make that connection. Yeah. To be to have supposed to have known that. I. Why? They, they're, they're with Ghetto. But he, they're never like, oh, I've adopted these girls. I, like, they never show that. I mean, they kind they do in this episode where, like, they're combing his hair and they're, like, daisuke. Oh, they're saying so. that they love him. I guess so. Yeah. yeah. But I also, just didn't know. I thought they were just, I thought he was fucking them. Make the, <laughs> children when how he could, adopts them. How could I have known that Genuinely he adopted them? They're like, very this, fair. They're like teens when they're combing his hair. Yeah. He's like 30. It's anime. It's Leonardo DiCaprio, apparently. How, how old was uh, Gina in Undead Unluck when they kissed? 65? Oh, 15. She didn't look it. Oh, yeah. she, oh, oh, when she died, she was 65. I don't think they kissed when she was like 15 when they originally met. Maybe. I never, you never know. He's got a thing for women in their teens, apparently. Yeah. I mean, he's trying to fuck one of them right it's, now. It's so not unreasonable for me to think that an adult man is fucking a teenager in an anime. The age of consent is 13 in Japan. Yeah, with a thousand asterisks. And I hate when people just throw that out. And nobody likes that. Nobody's a fan of that. Uh, Even in even in like most modern day anime, like they'll make a joke of like, oh, legally they could get married to like a 35 year old and a 16 year old. But they're like, but society frowns on it. I don't think you can change the law. I don't think you can. You can. There's asterisks where like a 13 year old can't just bang a 60 year old. Now, there is. I think from my education of it, okay, it's like a 13-year-old can have consent with like a 15, like they're like little brackets. 
I think 16 is married. There's a ton of, there's a ton of like loopholes, rules. rules and shit. Because that's where you, that's where you need all legal, over the place. that's where you need legal gray area consent. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's whack. Yeah. But I'm just saying the thing I don't like is when people are like, it's fine. The age of consent's 13. Yeah. One, that's whack. Two, no, it kind of isn't. Yeah. So like fucking stop trying yeah. to sell it. Like stop yeah. trying to sell me all this. You're mm -hmm. fucking weird. Anyways. Um, yes. So those are his daughters. Make right. the connection, Daniel. Use your reading comprehension. <laughs> I guess they're so. there with him during chapter zero. He adopts two little girls. I don't girls. fucking remember all of chapter zero. That was when I hated this show. Rewatch it, cared. Daniel. It's very good. I guess so. You get to watch Gojo open hand slap a man. I do remember. It's very embarrassing for him. Um, so all, yeah, the Jogo stuff's good. Um, love that. Sukuna stuff. Also incredibly exciting. Mm -hmm. I love Sukuna's voice. It's so good. His voice is so cool. It's just like grovelly and deep and scary. How did you feel about the animation in the episode? Good? See, here's yeah, why thing. not? I'm kind of in this in this kind of gray area where like I'm watching things like Pluto and I'm watching things like Shangri-La Frontier. What you like is so baffling. No, 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 no. I'm not saying, so JJK, it's, it's animation is very good. Yeah. Choreography is God tier. Yeah. But I'll switch to these other art styles that I kind of like more because they're more realistic. And then I'll go to JJK and I'll be like, ah, it kind of looks chunky. And I'm like, but like, I understand that like Mop is doing a really good job with it and it looks good. But I'm like, I'm like ah, I don't love the art style. Because, like, like, when a character is far away, like, when Toji was far away when the giant isopods were attacking him. He's a little starfish. And he was just a little starfish, and I was like, <laughs> ah, it just kind of takes me out of it, you know? I I dig it because it's so different. Like, Shangri-La Frontier looks like every anime I've ever seen. Mm. In terms of, like, art style and everything. I, like, still no, can't fair. believe that you think it's that, but it doesn't it's matter. It's so pretty. It's so okay. It's very good looking. It's just shiny. I like shiny. It's shiny, yeah, for sure. Big shiny guy. It's so it's half of my personality. I'm shining right now. I got a fan to stop it. You do like shiny. Well, like what we decided from that episode where we discussed this is that you really like detail and shine, and yes. I really like high fluidity and a lot of motion. Yeah. Pluto thankfully has both. When that dude's yes. playing the piano, it's nuts. So pretty. Um, but like. I like JJK's art style because it's a little grungier, but there's a ton of motion. Yeah. And I think it has to be for just how much motion. For an anime, like for an animation studio to do it in any good capacity. Yeah. Like you can't have this look like Violet Evergarden and have this many fights. Yeah. Because like, Violet be Evergarden impossible. is about like a typewriter and PTSD. Like, yeah. It, nobody's moving. It's like so stiff. It looks good, but like there is like quadruple the amount of animation yeah. in JJK season two than there is in like some of these more highly detailed anime. It truly is wall to wall fights. And I feel like a lot of like anime seasons that have been coming out recently have been wall to wall fights. Like thousand year blood war arc part two was like wall to wall yeah. fights, but Demon I think Slayer. Yeah. And Demon Slayer. I feel like the big difference between the TV, the uh, T Y B W and Demon Slayer and JJK is the fact that these fights not only feel important because like, you know, somebody might die, but also because like there's plot repercussions and like our favorite characters are being involved. And it's like, not just like random characters being thrown in. Like the biggest issue with T Y B W and why it doesn't feel important is because it's like, it's like, of course it's our favorite good guys battling against what you could also just say bleach. I guess. Just as I see you struggle to figure out and then I keep saying get the once. acronym. I get TYBW once and then it's it's right there. Gotcha. I just need to remind myself where the letters go. Gotcha. But like, it's all these random Stern Raiders being thrown in and everyone's like, okay, we know this guy for three minutes. There's yeah. no consequences here. The fact that we're seeing Dagon and Mahito and Kenjaku yeah. and all of these characters that have like stuck around and been like the bad guys the entire run of the show have important fights, really good. I think that's, that's the true. big kit because obviously with Demon Slayer, it's Upper Moon 4, it's um, Han Tengu and Gyoko. And it's like, who the fuck are these two? Like, genuinely, who gives, oh, Pop Boy yeah. and Wingman? Like, who cares? I mean, that one was just so stagnant. Like, that fight could have been three episodes. Oh, yeah. And it was eight. And I think where, I felt that a little in JJK with the old woman and her son and whatever. Yeah. Where I'm like, what are we, why are we explaining so much? Mm -hmm. I also hate that this is how Toji comes back, but whatever. Why? Because it's like so, because it's like you said, it's like, who the fuck are these people? Mm -hmm. They act 
accidentally bring him back yeah. for real. They just stumble upon a part of his yeah, body. Yeah, yeah, they like goof him into existence mm-hmm. coincidentally on the worst day ever for yeah. everyone else. Or the best day if you're mega me. It's just like so random, so coincidental. And it's like like one of those things where I just have to be like, all right, whatever. It's just a means to an end. He, yeah. they, they want Toji back. He's back. Plot device. I kind of just wish they didn't kill him in the past. Like, just have him, like, mortally wounded, doing Orochimaru, you know? like Slithers it, away. Well, like, his arm... Crawls into his curse. Yeah. And he's like, take me away. Yeah, like, becomes the worm or whatever. Like, and then metamorphosis is back into Toji. Mothman. So, yeah, like, uh, is Mothman. That'd be kind of sick. No cursed yeah. energy, but big old wings in love's lamp. <laughs> yeah, like, just lamp obsessed. Yeah. But, like... Because, yeah, the argument will be like, well, like, he had to come back somehow. Mm. He never had to die. The dude's fuck. You're writing it. Like, write it so he didn't die. Mortally wound him. Have him be trapped. Whatever. Kind of same with Ghetto. Yeah. Because I, I hate the Ghetto twist, too. That Ghetto is dead? Make it real Ghetto. I don't know who this fucking brain is. Now I don't care about this Ghetto, like, antagonist. I, it's so much more personal if it was real Ghetto. I, but... Here's the thing. Kenjaku has all of Ghetto's memories, his abilities, everything. So it is kind of Ghetto. And the thing is, it's less about it being actual Ghetto, in the sci- but more about like the psychological effect of it being Ghetto's body with Ghetto's memories. Like That's why Ghetto's daughters wanted to kill Kenjaku is because they wanted his body to rest. So then why not just make it real Ghetto? Because then the motivations would be different. So you see, all right. So Ghetto wanted to make every, like force the entire world into this incredibly terrible world that would force all non-sorcerers to become sorcerers. Right. Kenjaku doesn't want that. Okay. Kenjaku wants to combine the entirety of humanity with an entity known as Tengen. So like, right. So like that, like the, the motivations are vastly different. So like if it was ghetto, that would be cool. But like the psychological effect that ghetto dying and then coming back has on Gojo is the reason he gets sealed in the first place. Yeah. Like I really like that Kenjaku was piloting ghetto's body because of what it does to the people that knew ghetto. Yeah. Like it's dark, it's dreary, it's fucked up. It's not ghetto coming back and being like, never mind, ch- like second chance. It's, yeah. oh, that's Ghetto's puppeted corpse. Mm. And that's kind of sick to me. I suppose so. I love that I can bring you around on these. Anyways, so, Sukuna is awake. Yeah. Really dope. That was really cool. Really good episode. Just we loved Cuban it. bitches. Yeah. Yeah. Cuban, but do you want me to explain his abilities? Nah. Okay. You'll figure it out eventually. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> He's got two abilities. It's called yeah. Cleave and Dismantle. You'll learn eventually. Yeah, he cuts. Um, yeah, that's more or less. Like, literally, that's it. Yeah. One cuts inanimate objects. One cuts inanimate objects. Yeah. That's I just, it. I didn't know if it was like, in Bungo Stray Dogs, there is a villain for like multiple seasons mm. who everyone, like in the lore of Bungo Stray Dogs, no one knows what his ability is, mm. but people's heads just keep exploding. Oh my god, it's literally Newman from, uh... Seinfeld? No, from The Boys. <laughs> Kinda, yeah. 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 We literally just learned what her ability was in Gen V, actually. It was kinda cool. Oh, that's it sick. Like a crossover event. Honestly, The Boys Universe is my MCU. That's like, that's what I give a shit it's about. It's better. It's so much goddamn better it's good anyways yeah that's ahead. all the stuff we had to talk about uh this week outside of you know flashbacks best boys i do want to say real quick tokyo avengers fucking brutal episode <laughs> brutal like oh my god did it turn you around uh yeah yeah in a big way wow oh my god it was a tough watch that's sick. it was hard it was a hard pill to swallow uh, it was like i thought takamichi was gonna do something and save the day no fucking nope that's what i mean that's the best feeling is when there's a big death and it's not like, oh, it turns out Glenn survived actually. That exact. So I had a note from um, Dr. Stone because one of the characters got like stabbed through the abdomen. And I was like, holy shit, they're yeah. going to kill an important character. And then th- I- I'm writing the note down. I'm like, oh my God, Tokyo. I was like, yeah. Dr. And he, Stone. he like spits on some sand and he's like, now it's napalm yeah. healed. <laughs> and you're like, oh, it burns. Like I'm good. It was like literally 30 seconds later, they yeah. get petrified. And when you get unpetrified, you get cured. And I was like, this is fucking 30 seconds. I was Whatever. like, just kill him. Yeah. It was like, he's not even like integral. He's like, it's not like they're carpenter or they're captain or like the guy with good ears. It's yeah. just a dude. <laughs> fucking. If you're going to kill one person, make that the person, but no, they saved him anyways. Uh, so I have a flashback. It uh, actually pertains to what we talked about last week, and then neither of us knew what the fuck we were talking about. So Tite Kubo, the mangaka of Bleach, is coming out with a second, or already has a second manga out, uh, Burn the Witch. Yeah. So you brought that up. Yeah. Burn the Witch is getting an anime. It has. It's had one for years. No. Yes. No. Yes. Burn the Witch does not have an anime. Yeah, it does. No, it doesn't. Yeah. 
This was news I read. It's not news. It's news from like 2018. Burn the Witch anime. Uh-huh. Doesn't. <laughs> what are you talking about? Burn the Witch. Oh, oh, actually, that goes into my news. Ranking of Kings is getting an anime adaptation. <laughs> September 2023, it was announced that the prologue chapter, Don't d- Judge a Book by Its Cover, would receive an anime adaptation. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Set to reveal on. <laughs> Fuck! That's so funny. <laughs> I hear, I've been reading this like really niche. Be here I've been reading this really niche manga, uh, Dragon Balls. Dra- I think that's how you pronounce it, Dragon Balls. Oh, and I oh. think that's getting a. Oh, I'm going to take this news because Danny's being mean to me. We might have totally not Mark on the podcast, <laughs> but unfortunately, he lives in Ireland. Uh, but we're stuck between we're stuck between whether or not we want to buy him a ticket to go to Ireland or just do it on Zoom. Obviously, everything's better in person. Yeah. It would be way better to have him in person. And I don't know how logistically we would set up Zoom using our fucking roadcaster because yeah. we got lucky to figure this much out. This is already a nightmare. This we barely know what we're doing. Yeah. Uh, but I also kind of don't want to buy a human being a ticket from Ireland. So I don't know. Totally not Mark. Just come to LA. I do it's, it. He, it's my, it's my guest. Also, here's, here's my thing. Here's my thing. Totally not Mark. Uh, Ireland sucks in the winter. You know what doesn't suck in the winter? Fucking Santa Monica. We'll take yeah. you to the beach. We'll get you a tan. All right. Well, I'll show you what the crack is. Totally not Mark. Come sit in our chairs. What the crack is. That's a, if you ask. So if you want to ask what's up in Ireland, you say, what's the crack? Nice. Yeah. Wow. Now, how could he not come? How now? could he not come? I understand his culture. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the reason that Totally Not Mark may come on the podcast. Because is Danny's a fucking idiot. Because we had beef. Yeah. We had We had good beef. Uh-huh. Um, because I made a video in my very dramatic. What's funny is I'll, anytime I get in trouble, I'll be like, Oh my what's, video! What's trouble? You know, anytime people are mean. Yeah, anytime people me to anytime leave, people bully me. Anytime people are mean to me, um, or I'll like I'll constantly be like, you know, my videos are dramatic. It's like, uh, what do you call it? Like hyperbolic. I'm doing a persona. Anytime people are like mean at me, I'll be like, it's you know, I'm doing it for drama. It's this, that, whatever. Anytime people comment, this dude's so dramatic. Yeah. I'm like, what are you talking about? Everything I say is fact, dumbass. Yeah. Um, but you try to defeat the Japanese, the, the Japanese yeah. allegations. I'm at, I'm at war with Ye- Japan. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Japan. The damn You're shit. Russia. In yeah. You know, too. Um, but so I posted a video about Dragon Ball Daima, very similarly to what we talked about with Dragon Ball Daima. And similarly what to what I say about uh, Akira Toriyama very frequently, which is his editors made Dragon Ball Z more popular than he did. Yeah. And that I genuinely believe he doesn't understand why and what makes Dragon Ball so good. Akira Toriyama suffers from fumble the bag syndrome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and obviously, totally not Mark, for those of you who don't know, but you probably do, um, is the big Dragon Ball YouTube guy. Mm. He's the me of Dragon Ball. He is the you of Dragon Ball. Actually, you're probably the him of Naruto, considering the numbers. He probably started earlier. Yeah, 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 yeah that's fair. Um, but He's the me of Dragon Ball. <laughs> I love his content. I've watched it for years. Huge fan. He's what got me into, like, when I was making analytical videos on anime, mm-hmm. he is who I was, like, you know, like, still comedy shit, but, like... I did like a lot of Demon Slayer breakdowns. Really? Oh yeah. You're like things you missed in Demon Slayer because we like, no one's doing that yet. It was more like theme shit. Gotcha. Where I was like, okay, yeah, it was like what you missed about Tanjiro's new breathing style. Yeah. Um, but like theme wise. Yeah. Um, because you have a movie degree. Because I have a movie degree. And you're I have a, <laughs> I'm like kind of a director. Director. I barely know her. Oh. And that's why Harvey Weinstein is in jail. Hey, Mr. Movie Man, put one of these in your pictures. Hey, I got a little thing for you to make a motion picture about over here, but there won't be too much motion because he only works about 30 minutes a day. Nick gestures at his testicles very flamboyantly. Sorry, that's for the audio only listeners. Ah, yes, 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 yes. I completely forgot they existed. But so anyway, loved his content. Uh, When I was doing analytical stuff, he is like, he was my inspiration and like who I would watch to be like, oh, this is kind of how it's structured, this Mm. and that. I get... I had a DM one day um, being like, yo, did you see Totally Not Mark like used one of your TikToks in a video? I'm hyped. By the way, when I say one day, it's Halloween night. Yeah. I'm on my way to pick up some candy. Yeah. Um, 
I'm hyped. I'm floored about it. Throw on one of his videos like on Bluetooth. And I'm like, this is sick. I can't believe you see my content five minutes into his latest as of recording video about Dragon Ball Daima. He's like, he's like, um, you know, a lot of fans uh, are like afraid of change and like are just prematurely hating this just because it's different and no other video exemplifies this like this viral tiktok going around yeah and i'm like this is me baby ah, wait what did he say shine, baby. <laughs> i was like like in my car i'm like oh wait what yeah and then it plays my video and then he just lays into it for like five minutes <laughs> and i was like and i'm still like oh he's talking about my name. video he's in my name. <laughs> yeah. and like Again, my like in the video, I say Akira Toriyama like essentially has no idea what he's doing with the franchise. Mm -hmm. I'm not like, oh my god, totally not. Mark was mad at that opinion. Like, no shit. Yeah, it it was like very. So anyway, then I made a video like talking about on TikTok, and I was like, essentially, totally not. Mark hated my video, hated my take. Mm -hmm. People can do that. He was so respectful about it, like. He just used it as an example to get his points across. I disagree with a lot of the points. Yeah. Whatever. But, like, it was a friendly thing. And then I messaged him saying similarly that, like, just, you know, love your content. Sorry you don't like mine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry I'm a shithead. Um, But I would love to, like, discuss sometime, do a collab, or have you on the pod or whatever. Um, And he was like... Sorry I insinuated you were a fake fan. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> yeah, nice. Because <laughs> at one point he was like, um, like another thing this quote fan says, mm -hmm. and I was like, yeah, let's go, that's baby. Me, baby. That's me, baby. I dropped the halfway through Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> but, um, and so he was like, I shouldn't have, like, I'm sorry I said you were a fake fan, mm -hmm. this and that. And he was like, I'd love to be on the pod in any capacity. So I love that you love this man's content. If we have him on the podcast, I will be a nightmare. I want like I want you to know. I'm just gonna be like, so your anime sucks balls, and it'll just be like, w what? And I'm just gonna be like, yeah, yeah, no. I you should hear what Danny says about it when you're not around. He actually says Akira Toriyama, more like Akira tore up this manga because oh, he's awful. Shit. <laughs> That was That's pretty good. good. That was pretty good, right? Ring a ding ding. That Nicholas. was top of the That was top of the head. That was great. Yeah. Fuck me. You're so good. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, that's man. what I do. Yeah, it isn't. And that's and you what think upsets I couldn't me. do wipeout. Um <laughs> I do this. But so look, yeah, he's gonna have to I'll prep him for sure. Because he what's good about him and what I appreciate about him is that he talks about Dragon Ball in a way that makes you be like, oh, you know what? Maybe this is like deeper on an intellectual level mm. i think like i said the points he made about like my points i disagree with and i think when it comes to super i really think toriyama's just fucking slipping on banana peels <laughs> all the time. Like, another and tournament like, is that yeah. what they're asking for like i i think some are stretches but i like the content and you can disagree with someone and like their content yeah and that's what it is that's what free will is baby exactly. so yeah i don't know we might have totally not mark on the podcast and you know i'll try not to embarrass danny we're gonna we're gonna definitely try our hardest who mm. who i'm trying to think of who we could have on the podcast that you could potentially ruin for me ian that from would Smosh? be so i like i was I, at one point here's the thing though i would ruin it yeah I, like at, the, at this point <laughs> i'll I, just sit here and let you sweat <laughs> i'm so committed to not having a relationship with smosh whatsoever at this point i'd be like so, like, is one pussy not good enough, or, like, what? You'd be like, so, gooby-doo. Wait, no, that, fuck, that's the punchline. So we do a segment on here called shoop do. <laughs> fuck. No, I keep saying it too early. Cool. Have you ever seen booby doo canoe boo? <laughs> that's like a TikTok. I didn't make it. it, it just, I didn't make yeah, it. Yeah, I'll pull it up on my phone. And it's a five minute video, and we're just. He's like, ah, oh, that's good. And we're just like, no, 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 no. The good part's coming. Hey, you remember? You remember your video food fight? <laughs> Show him his twenty five minute, minute video. <laughs> Look at how stupid you look at look at how then, stupid you look like, here. As it ends, like every time he's like, oh, you know, there we actually start like shh, shh, shut up, shut up, I'm watching something. And as it ends, he's like, yeah, you know, that was a lot of fun to make. And then you like put on the next one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what about Mr. Beast? My kid loves him. <laughs> what do, you think of do you know him? Do you know this Mr. Beast? What do you Beast? think of Niga Higa? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
think you should bring that name back. Oh my god, dude. That would, I would just like if he brought, if he came on, I would just be like, I am so committed to just making this a fucking fever dream for this man. <laughs> Genuinely, the only person that'd be like, oh, it like I don't even know. I don't really watch YouTubers like that. I don't know, like Rhett and Link. I was almost when you were talking about Gegi Gegig Gegi Tommy Gegi Gegi Tommy. I almost had it. If we had a mong, if we had a mong, I was get, that would be. Big I almost did a bit where I was like, "Guess who's on the pod next week?" That would be. I would shit. <laughs> just a man in his translate. He's also just like fully anonymous, so he'd yeah. just be like a man in a mask. Mm -hmm. I would feel weird letting a famous person into my home. You know what? If we just got like a Japanese guy, put a mask on him. Who could say it's not? Fucking who's gonna yeah, just, like, just like, hey, just like, how much do you know about JJK? Yeah. Enough? Good. Yeah. That would just, we could get so many controversial, like, clickbaity titles. For sure. Gage Katami hates you, like, hates Yuji. We'd probably get sued if we don't, like, clarify at the end. We could just if say, it's not we could say on April Fools. impersonator. Like, it's just like, it's like quiet, like, like the legal yeah. text at the end of a Yeah, we do class. a little flash at the end. Yeah, like, in, in the tiny corner. That'd be pretty good. This April. Hey, Gege people, Katami listen, coming on. People lie about helping the homeless on YouTube every single day. They don't get sued. Who's going to sue them? The homeless? I fucking get enough. Can't of them. afford they can a lawyer. They can find a lawyer. I Public guess. defense. Yeah, pro bono. Uh, all right. Do you have a flashback? Wait, it's not a defense if you're. Oh, an <laughs> offense, an yeah, attack. A public off offense. Absolutely. <laughs> um. <laughs> Great for the audio listeners. So, so good. So, Ian, do you have news? <laughs> this is our favorite segment, uh, Ian. Uh, it's... Uh, <laughs> We just both lock eye contact with him. <laughs> so today we have Ian. Where's Anthony? Yes. What's he up to? Can we you call him? We Can actually, you call him? What's his Can phone number? <laughs> I love that we've just decidedly somehow become an anti-Smosh podcast. Like because one time that. Dorothy was like, you were fucking weird talking to that dude. Just like, we actually wanted Anthony, but we, we settled for you. I would be so fucking funny. Oh, oh my yeah. god, God, that'd be great, dude. Fucking news. Um, I uh, Tekken, a new character for Tekken. Dropped. I saw. I saw you thirsting over an old man. <laughs> it's really cool. Looking. Yeah. I like genuinely. That's the one that's gonna get me to buy Tekken. Like, mm -hmm. unironically, that one's not hyperbole. Um, Can I tell the crowd what you did to me? Go on. So, what Danny, do I do? <laughs> you texted me out of the blue, and yeah. you're like, hey. Still got a Bandai connect. And I was like, oh, what are we, what are we getting Coke? Like, what are we doing here? And I was like, yeah, he's like, you still, you still, you still know a guy? And I was like, can I, if you want, I'll hit stop no recording. No way you're about to interject on my interjection. <laughs> I'm sorry, this isn't Family Guy. It's volleyball, you we're like that doing, shit. We're doing a fucking, <laughs> I'm doing a, a side story in my side story. <laughs> we'll get on. there, all right? We'll I like do, when you threaten me. We'll <laughs> do this no fucking, fucking way. way. <laughs> Go on. All right, so and he's like, hey, you got that Bandai Connect? And I was like, yeah, I guess, I still do. So he was like, I was like, why do you need my Bandai Connect? And he's like, for Tekken. I want Tekken for like, free, I want please. Tekken. <laughs> you want to say, I was like, oh, you want to email one of the highest level people at Bandai for $60 off a fighting game. Tekken, please. These are the moments where I want to say. the email. Uh, it's like, Tekken, give, 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 give. Give me Tekken, please. Yeah, please. <laughs> I'm going to do this. That's and so funny. Just, Danny sets up a desk outside of Bandai's yeah. fucking headquarters. Just, I will spit until you give me Tekken 8. Me protesting. Yeah. Like. So, yeah. So, Danny wants Tekken 8. Uh, the new character from France mm. looks so fucking cool. I don't like that he's French. Nothing about him reads. You hate France. Well, fair. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, what? Ding. Uh, but also, <laughs> I don't actually hate France. I just don't believe it's real. Um, but doesn't read his French. No, Listen, I was I, also shocked. They give him like French. a baguette and a little stripey outfit. Here's, then he's French. <laughs> good about Tekken though yeah. is if it, if this was Street Fighter, mm -hmm. baguette out the wazoo. Yeah, literally baguette in his asshole if it was Street Fighter. As a, as a special move, that'd be sick. Um, I like Tekken because it's so multicultural. Mm. Like, all, that's almost part of the appeal of Tekken as a new character comes out, and it's like, where are they from? Yeah. And they all speak that language. Like, it doesn't come out, they're all speaking Japanese or English. People from the USA, American voice actors speaking English. People from Colombia speaking that language. Yeah. I dig that, and I dig that all the characters, like there's a Jamaican character in Street Fighter. Yeah. Just like, smile half the size of his face, like bouncing around with maracas. Yeah. And the most recent one's a little toned down. He's still smiling, but he's like, sick as fuck yeah um 
I but like, the guy in there's a guy in Tekken who's got like the guy in Tekken I think is the sickest design yeah. is is the black dude and he's really strong and he's blind and he's blind. Yeah. That's that dude. That dude's right. Yeah, uh, Leroy something. Yeah, um, that's that motherfucker. That's the sick. only guy outside of lion tiger mask guy that oh, I know okay. from Tekken. Yeah, but that's why I like that Tekken's representation is so cool and respectful and i'm not like and not just like racial epithets yeah it's not yeah. just like racial caricatures and i'm not even like coming at it from like oh i didn't play street fighter until recently because it was racist yeah i didn't play because i didn't like it like no, I, I was bad at it i was like, bad at it yeah. like i street fighter 5 i was bad at street fighter 6 i like and i'm good at mm -hmm. um and it's nothing to do with them being caricatures but it's cool it makes it feel like I dive into a character and they're doing like a real martial art from that culture. Yeah. And they're like, they look representative of that culture. They're speaking the language. It makes it more fun for me to want to like dive into that character. Yeah. Cause with Tekken and all fighting games, but mo more so Tekken, cause it's so complex and the mm -hmm. characters have a hundred plus moves each. It's genuinely gross. You, it's so gross. It's so dense. Like, with Tekken, you are very encouraged to pick a character and play them for a hundred hours. Yeah. So if they are like, if I latch onto a character that does capoeira mm -hmm. and like they look cool doing it, it's like the kind of yeah, 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 fancy yeah. Mm -hmm. fight. Brazilian. Yeah, Brazilian. Yeah. Uh, if I latch onto them, their character is cool. Like the culture seems cool and well represented. Then I'll be like, fuck it. I'll research capoeira. That's yeah. fun. So that's why I dig about Tekken. And I like that. He's French, but he's not like, oh, wee oui, wee, oui, and throwing snails oh, at you. Oh, and he's like throwing, yeah, he's like yeah. a mime. He can like make walls. What I also like about this, and thank you for letting me have my fighting game corner every other episode. Yeah. Um, What I like about this. I appreciate you, Daniel. I appreciate you appreciating me. And you know what I don't do? When oh. you go on your fighting, when I go on my huh, huh, I don't go. <laughs> yeah, I, I let you have your moments, sir. I know, I'm sorry. It's good. Um. I like I like keeping up the narrative that I'm mean off camera. <laughs> Danny hits me. <laughs> Danny beats the fucking shit out of me. I Listen, do. The live broadcast knows there was a full episode where you're like, I'm going to fight you. And we did 10 minutes of Dan how would Danny would beat Nick in a fight. I could and I would. Me and Dorothy. We, you got drunk as fuck on Halloween too when we talked about it. You don't remember because you got drunk. Oh, I was locked out. Yeah, yeah. I fully blacked out. You, you, and then you were like, "Hey, everybody here, everybody here! Out of all the women, who would win? Round robin, who wins?" And you made everyone <laughs> talk about who'd fight who. Really? Yeah. That sounds like me. And you were like, "Who would win, Sarah or Dorothy?" A lot of people said Sarah. She's got grit. Yeah, she got a lot of grit. Yeah. When I asked great. every, you know what I do remember? When I asked everybody who would win in a fight between you and me, you don't remember that. What did everyone say? You don't remember. That's the one thing. Nick blacked out. Remember I, how that? I remember what I don't remember. I remember out of all the girls, I said Ellen would win. I remember that happened, and then I asked all the girls. I asked all the girls who between us. No, two. you didn't say that because Ellen. Everyone was like Ellen would win. Yeah. And you were like, no, Dorothy's got you. You're like Dorothy has that hatred in. Oh, I have to do that. That's, okay. that's me covering my bases, baby. Okay, you fair. Got it. Because, I guess. Listen, Dorothy, Dorothy the, the illusion of power. Got she weighs it. 105 pounds. Yeah. She's not beating anybody in mm. a fight. But I love her. I love her after death. She's my favorite right. person on earth. But I asked everybody at the party who would win in a fight between you and uh -huh. me. That's so unfortunate that you don't remember. I've never blacked out before, so that's weird that like you, you can just- You were also drunk. Don't even. <laughs> don't even. You were, that was as drunk as you've been. Not, not around me. Around you, me. I guess. Yeah. I you, got you know drunk? how I know? How? I have no fucking idea. I saw you drink like two or three drinks. I'm just assuming. I was yeah. hammered. I was like pretty drunk. I was sizably. God. I was pissing my eyes out. But anyway. Also, restroom situation at that bar. Nightmare. I didn't know. I just held it. Very impressive. We were uh, only there like an hour and a half. We were there like a long time. We were it, there like two and a half it hours. It was the longest two, no, less than two hours, the longest two hours of my life. Sarah mm -hmm. was reeling the entire time Why? by how much you paid to skip the line. Oh, yeah. And by Impressive. a table. Impressive. Yeah. Yeah. You could do it too. Uh, well, you, you know. know. Yeah. Listen. But it's just, it's what, you, right. you, it's what you use it on. Never. Never. Are you kidding me? I, listen, Earn it. Genuinely, that's very fair. <laughs> I was also reeling about it the next morning. I was like, I did what? <laughs> I was like, I did $1,200. <laughs> so we were there for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, 
<laughs> I had so much anxiety the next you day. Just, Dorothy's asleep. She just feels a big hand like claw her throat. And you're like, what did you let me do? The next morning, I had the worst anxiety of my entire anxiety. life. I was like, did I do anything fucking stupid? And she was like, no, I've had a great time. And I was like, I feel like I did something stupid. And then I was like, oh, yeah, I bought a fucking table. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, But, 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 but. Oh, last thing about Tekken. Oh. Um, I love Tekken is always been just like fisticuffs mm -hmm. and like it's the fun was that it was all these different cultures all these different like martial arts styles you have a capoeira guy you have a jujitsu guy this and that you have yeah. a boxer now that there have been eight tekkens starting a little saucy with it and like this dude's just got guns about time we introduced gun jutsu he's just got guns he's got a sword he teleports yeah. everyone's like that looks op Fuck off. It looks fun. Yeah. I I love whenever a game comes out with a character and I'm like, that looks busted. Mm -hmm. They can balance him later. Just give me something that looks like it prioritizes fun. Yeah. You know, that's why I like Siege, uh, Rainbow Six Siege, so you can relate. Every now and then. This is, explain it in Minecraft terms. I don't like just yapping at you. You know, I like why? when we do a balance. It's my favorite activity. Like Rainbow Six Siege. Every now and then they come out with someone who's just like castle again. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, but better, but it's like, it's just like uh, this person puts down a little sensor and it, or this person hacks cameras. Yeah. Shut up. Yeah. This person puts down a fucking. Dirk heavy. Yeah. Uh, is that. Dirk no. heavy hacks cameras by getting your cell phone. Oh, well, Dokebi does a cell phone. I like that because it's essentially a stun and yeah. like a loud thing. The Australian dude, Mozzie. Oh, Mozzie takes your drones. Takes your drones. Yeah, it's like, this dude takes your drone. Yeah. Shut up. Who cares? Great I, guns. But great, then, great voice lines as well. Like good guns. That's what helps it. But then it's like next week, it's like this guy puts down a reinforced barricade that breathes fire. Goyo. And it's like that guy please get me the fucking grappling hook so lady. bad goyo's not good they're all bad but i like the fun ones so i like grappling hooking in shotgun 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 only like. works in copper but so much fucking fun when it does work mm -hmm. yeah so much got siege is awesome i love siege honestly i wish siege was like more socially accepted so much fucking fun i love it yeah um but yes so tekken looks fun yeah i'm excited that they gave a french man weapons don't know why i mean historically they yeah. usually didn't use those you know but what since it was so long i'll say that's my best boy too do you have a best your boy? best boy is the french man yeah what's his name victor that's fair that's yeah. a good name uh my best boy is mikasa because in two days attack on titans final episode airs yeah. and she why is, her specifically she's just the best boy from the episode gotcha. i'm not gonna spoil anything but like mikasa's that bitch how do you feel do you even care about the last last episode if we didn't have a podcast if you didn't have to care would you be like, oh, what? I would watch it. If if we didn't have all this, I'd watch it. I don't know if I'd be excited. As an anime fan, no. Yeah. As somebody who makes money talking about anime that are popular at certain moments, yes. That's why I Because I can now talk about Attack on Titan for the next two weeks, and I can be like, oh, did you like Attack on Titan's ending? I've already made a video that's going out Saturday that's like, hey, did you like Attack on Titan's ending? And like, here's why I don't love Attack on Titan's ending. So it's like, it's, it's the manga. You think they'll change it? People hate the manga's yeah. ending. Really? They won't. It's already been, it's kind of already been like, there was a theory that they were going to change the manga ending and the anime ending to be different. But because of the last episode that came out and it following the manga panel for panel, unless for some reason they just throw a you, fucking Hail you Mary. You told me they do like a multiverse thing in the anime that's not in the original. Though. The theory was based off a multiverse thing gotcha. because there's a scene in what will be the last episode where Mikasa has like a- Is this a spoiler? Not necessarily. And I genuinely mean this, not necessarily. There's a scene where Mikasa like sees an alternative, what some people thought was an alternative future or another dimension, where her and Aaron are just kind of coasting out the last years of his life. Got so it. it's like like they're like they have a cabin together and like they're like, oh, he's like, let's spend the last four years of this life together. So everyone was like, is that another dimension? Is that another universe? What's going on here? And, and so people were like, oh, let's make connections yeah. between the anime and the manga that are different. So the manga and the anime start off like in a different way. Yeah. Uh, and like that was like the big like jumping off point in the theory is really good i have an entire video about this on nc hammer 23 by the way it's my least viewed video ever that's uh, tough not great that hurts um and that was like at that point i realized it's it weird because like, it's so interesting sounding it's really good oh is it on the wrong channel it's on nc well this hammer? was like the thing that made me realize i need to just start the weave commander because yeah, so i was yeah. like oh naruto fans have don't give a shit about what i'm talking about um so mikasa best girl it's gonna be the same thing as the manga people are going to be best pissed yeah i bet it's bad you know what's funny it's wait oh go on it's bad. That's 
what I hear. It's bad. Like I like I, I know there's a lot of Attack on Titan fans listening. Actually, this actually comes out a day after Attack on Titan comes out. If they don't change the ending, it will be yeah. the biggest firestorm the anime community has ever seen. And holy shit, am I excited. You know what, though? Yeah. I wonder how many people are like us or me where they're just like so apathetic towards because it's like no them but them spreading it out like this i really genuinely don't think has actually built any hype i it snuck Fair. up on us it we did. didn't even know well, they didn't release the, the release date until like two weeks before it was coming out well exactly like no one's talking about it yeah no one's like yo like we have friends doing watch parties they're content creators yeah like josh who loves attack on titan doesn't even know yeah i should tell him probably but, but like I I wonder if they released it like a regular fucking show, just mm. like season ends. That would be more explosive than this. I think people will hate it if yeah. it's bad. I think people will like give it the Game of Thrones treatment, but I don't think it'll last as long as it would have. Like the hate. How long did we talk about the last episode? A week, you know? Yeah, it was like, like it was, not at all. It happened and then we're like, that was fun. I, I think this will come and go and people will be like, what the fuck was that? Maybe Danny was long. right. It's been 10 years. It's been yeah. 10 years since the first episode aired. And, and it's I, not that long. We're not going out. Show. We're not going out with like a bang by any yeah. means. We're going out with like a, a sputter. And it's like, okay, cool. We'll get a new episode, an hour long episode every oh, eight months. Dope. Like, it's just like, if there was the momentum carried, it was yeah. like, oh my God, that episode was sick. I can't wait for like the second to last episode. It's like week by week by week. We're just yeah. watching more and more Attack on Titan, but they approached it so wrong. Yeah. And that might be, listen, they might be trying to make us as apathetic to it as possible because the ending is objectively bad. So who knows? Maybe. Cool. This is the part of the episode where me and Danny talk to the live audience, also known as our love letters. This is the part of the show where me and Danny gauge a question from our live audience viewers who just got to watch me and Danny talk dirt about all of our content creator friends. Unfortunately, that is a privilege that you get for either $4.99 or $5.99 a month if you become a YouTube member. So, Daniel, if you could, for me, gather a question from the crowd. Mr. Eamon asks... Who's the most misunderstood character in anime? You have one? I absolutely have one. Hit it. It is so easily Meruem, it's not even close. Oh, I thought you were gonna go Donzo. Donzo is not misunderstood. Okay. Uh, he's just the American government. That's he's just not liked enough. No, Donzo is not liked enough as a villain. Like he is gotcha. a great villain. He's understood. He's the government. Like <laughs> gotcha. it's just like the government is evil. That's Donzo. Gotcha. Meruem a lot of people believe is this like super evil, powerful dictator who wanted to usher the world into an era of peace. And the thing I see from a lot of TikToks like is the reason that I have this opinion is people are like, oh, why didn't anybody listen to Meriweb? He wanted to create peace. He wanted to break down the barriers between like, like, like races and just make sure that all of us knew we were humans. Meriweb fully admitted to Netero that he was gonna use terrorism and power like to make sure that all of humanity bent a knee to him. Let's not forget that the entirety of the first half of the Chimera Antarch is him ushering an entire country into a courtyard so we can use them as a meat manufacturing company. But the real core of Mer is like, while that is the way that a lot of like talking heads would be like, this is who Meruem is, the real core of Meruem's character is the fact that he's boiled down to just somebody who realizes that the reason that humans live is so we can find connection with other humans. That's Meruem's take home message, not his ideas on how to run a country. So people who are like, oh, Meruem, mega Chad, like the dude who wanted to save humanity from itself. Not the entire, like, not the important part of that character. The important part of the character is the fact that he finds connection with Komogi and that he dies happy because he understands what it is to be human. Wow. Yeah. I wish I could have any input. That's it's fine. You know, what? I yeah. did a, 30 minute video on it that just like, I cry in uh, like ball my eyes out and it has 130,000 views. So wow. 130,000 people have seen me openly ball. Wow. That's kind of beautiful. In Talking a way. about anime. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of disgusting in a way. It's not great. I think the most misunderstood character in all of anime, Denji. Yeah. I, yeah. You know what? There's we've a got, hot take. No, we've gotten a lot of hate for this take. I actually. know. I know because we put Denji in S tier and all of our fucking tier lists. Yep. And I can finally explain why directly to the people who tell me I'm wrong. Yep. Because all of the people who are like, all the people who are coming at us about it are misunderstanding what Denji shtick is. Absolutely. They're all like, Denji's just a generic perv character. He just character. wants to touch boobies. He just wants to touch booby. That's what he thinks he wants. Yeah. It's not what he needs or what he actually wants. And that's what makes season one of Chainsaw Man 
so good, despite the fact that if you tell somebody that it's about a character whose motivation is to touch tits, yeah. they won't watch it. Like, yeah, on paper, that is a bad motivation. Mm -hmm. What makes Denji work is the fact that he doesn't want to touch tits. He wants intimacy. He wants a real-life human connection with anybody, and that just looks like physical attraction because that's what Makima tells him. Yeah, the, the fact that he's getting manipulated, the fact that he gets to touch boobs in the first, like, three or four episodes and then is, like, having an existential crisis about it, but it's not in, like, a, like, silly, funny way, mm -hmm. like an undead unlock or something it would be. It's, it's like, a genuine, like, oh, I achieved a goal and it fell flat. Yeah. Will this happen with all the goals I set out for? Mm -hmm. I think people genuinely don't understand the nuance of like what his motivation is, how Himino comes into play with it, how Makima does, how power does. It's not like a harem anime. Yeah. It's like Himino teaches him or power teaches him that sex isn't actually just what he wants. Himino teaches him that it can be scary and bad. Yeah. Like you don't need to want to score. Yeah. And Makima is just fucking with him. Yeah. She's using him. Yeah. And because of Makima's influence, it's warped his entire worldview. Mm -hmm. And like, that's the thing is like, she creates this worldview where she is the end goal so that she can keep pulling him through the yeah. hole that she's made in his reality. Exactly. And also indirectly teaching him that what he wants is intimacy with their little like chupa chu moment and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. So Denji is an incredibly under, I stand with that 1000% yeah. incredibly misunderstood character. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. And that's all that we have. Thank you guys so much for checking in for this week's episode of Otaku's Anonymous. We appreciate you guys being here. Make sure you follow us on all the other platforms like Instagram, TikTok, become a YouTube member. If you want to hear me and Danny dish dirt uh or you know just watch us live and ask us questions i've been at the 23 also known as the we become mander oh and go pick up our merch uh we have a lot of incredible merch uh in the store i know danny's been making a bunch of new merch uh for us yes with yeah our stickers yes i am i am so very slowly <laughs> yeah yeah he's not listen sometimes you gotta prod danny and that's fine uh but yeah go Check out our merch store. Pop in there at talkisanonymous.net. Really great stuff. Uh, outside of that, Daniel. I'm Danny Mata, uh, otherwise known as DMata3 on TikTok or DMOT with three Ts on Instagram. If you watch this podcast uh, and you're new, DM me on Instagram or subscribe to the uh, membership. I probably should have said that instead because we want people on the memberships. Um, but I like getting DMs. I like when people are like, I found you from the pod. Oh. Yeah, okay. I reply to my DMs as I, much as I can. I just thought you were doing an Ian Cox there thing and just open no. up the relationship. You're like, DM me. No, if no. you if you are new to me from the pod, mm. I love when people are like, found you from the pod. The pod is the like main source that I came from. Mm -hmm. That makes me feel so great. Can I be can I be so real with you right now? Joel? I feel like I feel like they're mostly yours. What do you mean? I like the fans. I don't know. I get a lot of it where like I read my DMs. So I don't get DMs of people being like found you through Danny. I get people being like, I found you through the pod, which must mean they found me through you. Yeah. Also, I used to get a ton of comments on our TikToks, remember, that are like, the one that's not Nick is blah blah blah. Oh, fucking you know? Hypeland messaged me and they want to send me things. Oh no. Uh oh. Wow. I never check my Instagram requests. We oh, need to leave. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh god. Anyway, I'm Danny Mata. Find me on YouTube. I make a lot of content. It's kind of popular off right now um and yeah and don poe for life bye we love you Mwah.